Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to PlayOnSports.com's Georgia High School Association Friday Night Game of the Week. Tonight we come to you from the Hornet's Nest, Ray Mayna Stadium, on the campus of Roswell High School, about 25 miles north of the city of Atlanta, as the Roswell Hornets host the Walton Raiders. Good evening, everyone. Kevin Beck, along with Chris King, Kenny, and Jason, our production team. We are set for a big one here tonight as the Walton Raiders come in poised for some postseason action at 7-2. The Roswell Hornets looking to put a positive stamp on their season. They come in struggling at 2-7, and seven, but it is senior night here at Roswell High School, and they're looking for good things to happen. And Chris King, we've got the Walton Raiders, as we said, ready to hit their stride into the postseason. The Roswell Hornets coming in as the underdogs at home. We saw what happened last week when Loganville went to Gainesville and pulled off an epic upset. Can we expect more of that tonight? Anything is possible when you play that game of high school football, Kevin. And quickly, we're going to touch on Region 5, 6A just for a moment because, as you mentioned, Walton definitely qualified for the playoffs. They're, in, they're the number two seed. Last year, will be the number three seed. But after that, it gets a little interesting. Milton right now sitting at four and two in the, uh, sub in the region. Etowah at a three and three record. Woodstock with three and three. Wheeler at two and four. Only three, only two of those three teams will make the playoffs. Uh, and, and also, um, Wheeler, as I mentioned, at, at two and four, has a chance to make the postseason. Milton, tonight they play at Woodstock. If they win, they're in. Etowah is home versus Lasseter. That's going to be a tough game for Etowah. Woodstock is at Milton, another tough ball game. Wheeler, Kevin, touching on Wheeler just for a minute. Two years ago, they were one and nine. Last year, four and six. This year, they, they are five and four. They won a couple of games in a row. And if Wheeler is to make the playoffs, what has to happen is Etowah, Woodstock, and Wheeler would play a, a mini game. A play-in type of game? A play-in type of game. On Monday, Wheeler has to beat Cherokee. Lasseter has to beat Etowah. Milton beats Woodstock. If that happens, Wheeler gets into that mix of the three teams that would play a couple of mini games to see who would get that final spot in the, re in the region. So lots going on. Of course, tonight's main attraction is senior night here at Roswell High School. Roswell playing for pride. Walton holding and solidifying that number two spot, trying to get ready for postseason action. And we got a good one, Kevin. Big story for Walton coming in, Chris, has got to be the absence of Tyron Jones, their senior running back who has really been leading them this season. They will be without him tonight. Thought we might see him, but it doesn't look like we're going to see Jones tonight. So stepping in is going to be a big team effort for that backfield on offense for the Raiders. Yeah, I talked to the wrestling coach uh, about 20 minutes before the kickoff, and he said, of course, um, Jones, a big wrestler as well. He said that Jones may play next week, so they're looking for him to maybe get in and get in his stride as the postseason starts. But I tell you what, talking about running backs, Kevin Roswell's got one of the best around, Andrew Quatang, and we will see a lot of him tonight. Big multi-sport star here at Roswell, one of the guys that they acknowledged for senior night as they had those ceremonies before the football game. And we are set to go. Roswell won the toss. They deferred. Until the second half, we will see that high-powered Walton Raider offense first, and we are set to go on an absolutely perfect night for football. A little November chill in the air. It is forecast to be crisp and clear tonight, and we're expecting a big one as we are underway from the Hornet's Nest, and that kick is going to go deep and out of the end zone, and Walton will go to work from the 20. Kevin, you talked about the man, the man or men who are going to fill in the gaps tonight for uh, Tyron Jones. One of the guys we will see a lot of is junior running back D.J. Smith, who wears number 21, and he has stepped in admirably in the absence of Jones. So here we go on a Friday night in Roswell. Parker McLeod will be the quarterback tonight. And it is our pleasure to have you along on Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. They go to the ground right off the bat. And just a couple off the left side. DJ Smith. Smith, the ball carrier, the junior. A couple of green jerseys in there on the tackle for Roswell. Chris Walton comes in here scoring 23.9 points per game. Roswell, 23.8 points per game. 
but their records do reflect a very different season. Walton at 7-2, and two, the Hornets at 2-7. and seven. Second down and seven, first possession of the football game, looking to the outside, and that is going to be incomplete on the near sideline. The clouds pass incomplete. They'll bring up third down and seven. Yeah, the intended receiver was number six, the senior Stone Romberg. If you're looking for good news for the Roswell Hornets tonight, Chris, their home record, 2-2. Two and two. They have gone winless, 0-5 oh on the road this season. Big play for the defense now for Roswell. Third and seven. Now we're going to have encroachment. That'll be a free five. And they can ill afford mistakes like that here tonight, Chris, coming in as big underdogs, looking to put a positive stamp on an otherwise disappointing season. And you touched on it earlier, Walton getting ready to put themselves into postseason action. They've got to polish up their program, and they do expect to see Tyron Jones back. He said, Chris, possibly next week they're going to need all the bullets to fire as they get into postseason play. Yeah, pretty good uh, ankle sprain, a high ankle sprain, and those are tough. Those are the ones that normally keep you out longer than a regular sprain would do. Following the five-yard offside penalty, it'll be three and, or third and three. McLeod going to hand off one more time, looking for D.J. Smith right side. Continues to drag tacklers out to the 40, and that will be a first down for the Raiders. Kevin, if you, if you noticed on that play, Smith was very, very calm. And he was very patient. He waited until his blocking on the right-hand side opened up the holes, and then he just kind of stuck his head down there and kind of juked and jived and got a really, really good positive result there on third down. Walton just 2-2 two and two on the road in 2012, but they are on a streak, Chris. They've won their last three coming into this one. First and 10 from the 41. McLeod under center. One more time. They go on the ground. And they will stick with D.J. Smith. So it looks like he's going to be the bulk workhorse here tonight for the Raiders. Looks like Devontae Hill on the tackle that time for Roswell. We'll bring up a second down and seven. First possession of the football game from the Hornets' nest in Ray Manus Stadium on the campus of Roswell High School. And Kevin, what we're seeing right now is what I think we're going to see on both sides of the ball. Both of the teams scoring in the mid-20s, ball control, a lot, of, a lot of yards on the ground. McLeod goes play action this time. And he's got a ton of space on the right side. He'll have first down yardage and more out of bounds at the Roswell 42-yard line. So the pursuit over-pursued, Chris, and that opened the door on the back side, and McLeod took full advantage, a big run and a big first down pickup. Yeah, the play action did exactly what it's designed to do, and that is to get the defenders going in one direction, and the quarterback had the presence of mind not to give it to his running back because he saw he curled around on the right side and had plenty of room. Big gain for Walton. First and 10 from the Roswell 44-yard line. One more time on the ground. D.J. Smith breaking tackles inside the 35. Very close to a first down. Probably be about a football short. Kevin, we were fortunate enough to see both of these teams earlier in the season. I believe our second broadcast, we over in Alpharetta, we saw a great ball game between Walton and Alpharetta where it was um, Alpharetta coming out on top. And then just a few weeks ago, we were here at Roswell where we saw a Roswell and a Wheeler game that went down to the end, and it was a long field goal that won it for Wheeler. Seen some great performances so far in 2012. Looking forward to the playoffs, but we've got one to settle here tonight at the Hornets Nest. First and ten. Play action once again. Now looking downfield into the end zone. That is going to be caught. Great catch. Beautiful catch in traffic. Ryan Craig on the receiving end. 34-yard touchdown pass. And just like that, Chris, Walton on top. A great adjustment by the wide receiver. The ball was, the, the ball was aired out. He had two defenders on him, and he just stopped and let one receiver, one defender go past him and stayed in front of the other defender and really did a good job of concentrating to bring that ball in and a quick strike for the Walton Raiders here on the road. And McLeod had all day to throw that football, Chris. He had great protection from the offensive line. Extra point is up, and it is good. Anthony Price knocks it through with 9.30 to play opening quarter. The Raiders go 80 yards 
And on a 34-yard touchdown strike, if you will, dropped it right in there. McLeod to Ryan Craig. And that will stun this senior night crowd. Walton right down the field. Really not too much trouble, Chris. And, Kevin, the... Um saga of contradicting Chris continues. As soon as I say <laughs> ball control on the ground, on the ground, what do they do? They air, they it, air out. it out. Exactly. Of course. Now, Chris, I want to remind our viewers that last week we went to Gainesville, and Loganville had been written off before they even got on the bus, and we saw one of the epic comebacks in our broadcasting career. So let's not turn the lights out on these Roswell Hornets just yet as they get set to get the football for the first time here on senior night. Looks like uh, Schlade back deep to receive for Roswell. I'm trying to catch the other number of the, uh, looks like it might be Slade and uh, John, John Albert. Albert. And Mishan Slade, he's gonna be one of the offensive weapons here tonight for the Hornets. And coach Justin Sanderson. It's finally football weather, Kevin. Sure is very crisp, very beautiful this afternoon, about 65, 70 in some parts of Metro Atlanta, but when the sun went down, the thermometer went with it. And we have got ourselves a very crisp November evening for Friday night football in North Atlanta. This will be the first possession for the Roswell Hornets. Trying to get this home side fired up. As a 2-7 and seven season winds to a close here, the Hornets looking to end it on a positive note. Nice room up the near sideline. John Albert on the receiving end. He's going to start Roswell out at about their own. Looks like they're going to down him at the 28 or 29 yard line. Pretty good starting position. Now we're gonna get our first look at Ryan Monty, the senior quarterback, also acknowledged tonight on senior night. One of his big weapons is at wide receiver in the game number two, that is uh, Bennett Barton. He'll line up, and as we said, we're gonna see a nice bit of number 41 in the backfield for Roswell. Andrew Quatang is the tailback in the formation, Monty, Goes play action to Quatang, and he's going to go down in the backfield on the end. A nice job of penetration and getting in there was Jordan Davidpour, and he has been one of the guys they talked about, Chris, as one of their defensive stars, and Monty had no time to throw that ball. Yeah, that junior linebacker, he did a really good job. He shot the gap, as you can say, and did a really, really good job of getting into the backfield before Roswell could do anything. Loss of five on the play, bring up second down and 15. Another play action move They're to Quatang. Monty's in trouble back at the 15, and he'll be gang tackled there. So consecutive plays, consecutive sacks for that Raider defense. And a very inauspicious start for the Roswell Hornets right now, Chris. They are under fire. Consecutive sacks by consecutive junior linebackers. This time it was number 26, Jordan Vorster. That brings up third down and 23. So it's possible that the Raiders saw the Gainesville broadcast last week, Chris, and they're going to have none of it. All the way back to the 15-yard line. You've got to think they're going to play it safe here. Call it third down and 23. Monty from the shotgun, play action to Quatang. Shuffled his feet, and now he's got a man loose on the far sideline. It's Bennett Barton. A foot race down to the 40. Man on his tail. If he breaks free, he'll go. He will go. Unbelievable. Incredible. Bennett Barton. Contradicting Chris. I say they play it safe. What do they do? I'm just going to be quiet from now on, Kevin. What a great play. 85 yards, Bennett Barton. And, Kevin, it looked as if the defensive back had a chance to break on that ball. That ball was not thrown with any sort of emphasis on it. It was kind of lobbed up there, but I guess it was just put in the right spot. And I mentioned Bennett Barton at the beginning as being one of the main weapons. He caught that ball, and he just went down the line and showed his speed, and quickly the homestanding Roswell Hornets strike back. And you know what, Chris? Looks like the Roswell Hornets watched the Loganville game too. How about that? They're a point away from tying us. It's up, and it is good. 7.53 to go in the first quarter, and we are tied at seven. When it looked for all intents and purposes, Chris, that they were going to play conservative, try to get field position on a punt, Roswell having none of it. Bennett Barton on about an 11-yard out, a little flare pass, and he just showed that speed down the sideline, breaking tackles. Looked like he was going to cut back and maybe run into some tacklers, but he had a couple guys around his ankles that he just outran down that far sideline. And that has got this crowd into it. 
on senior night. They are right back in this ball game. You know, momentum is crazy, Kevin. Two consecutive sacks by a couple of junior linebackers by Walton, and we were expecting a good chance for a punt, but then coming out of the gate, as Walton did, big passing play, touchdown as a result. Two touchdowns on the board. We've barely played five minutes of football. You think Ryan Monty got into the huddle and said, hey, O-line, I need one more, one more tick of the clock and I can get something done, and that's exactly what happened. He found his primary target, Bennett Barton, and they handled it. Another senior on the receiving end, and they really took care of business on that 85-yard pass play. A really good call by the uh, offensive coordinator because Walton and everybody else in this stadium thought that it was going to be a run, safe, try to get your kicker in the middle of the field to kick the football. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what they saw. Walton had 8-9 in the box. Their safeties maybe came up a little bit, so they figured they'd take a chance, and it paid off for Roswell. A fundamental play calling down there, Chris. If they're aggressive, you've got to find something to slow them down, a draw or a screen or a little flare, and that's exactly what they did, and it paid huge dividends for the Roswell Hornets. We are just under eight minutes remaining in the first quarter, and this thing has already been exciting. Another deep kickoff. Dear Roberto really driving them deep out there. Yeah, I was going to say, don't look for very many kick returns for Walton tonight. D. Roberto really, really has a good foot. Showed it a few weeks ago in the game against Wheeler. Check that, Chris. That was Bennett Barton, the man who caught the touchdown pass, kicking off and driving it deep into the end zone. A little double duty going on there. A little adrenaline release after running 85 yards. Had enough leg left to kick it about eight yards deep into the end zone and force Walton to go 80 yards again. Parker McLeod, the quarterback, from the shotgun. And they're going to go near side with a give to Quar Stewart. And he breaks a tackle on the edge and gets a couple out to about the 24-yard line. A good job by Roswell's defense that time. Nick Pickfin on the uh, tackle that time. Senior cornerback. Second down and five. So it looked like the Raiders' defense came out on fire, sacking Monty in consecutive downs. Roswell had the answer with the pass play to Bennett Barton. And now let's see what the Roswell defense has in store for Parker McLeod and company. Play action to Smith. McLeod with time. And he is going to throw behind it, his intended receiver on the near side. Incomplete. Looking for Ryan Craig that time. And Kevin, that was just simply not a good pass because the quarterback had plenty of time. He just, the timing wasn't right on that pass. And I think if he had thrown that in front of the receiver, Chris, it would have been big trouble because it looked like he was covered with inside technique by the linebacker. So once again, third down and five. DJ Smith. Joins McLeod in the backfield, who is going to throw this time. And he's going to go down. No, he eludes the tackle. And now go down. Chris, we had a quarterback change on that play. That was Price Wilson. He's a little slow getting up as well. And he's slow getting up. So they slipped in a different quarterback on us. Price Wilson comes in, number 14. And he went down after some pursuit. Good pressure on the quarterback. A couple of uh, green jerseys were there initially. Chris Bryant was the one who made the final tackle for Roswell. And it looks like he's going to be helped off, Chris. A little groggy. Physio's helping him to the sideline. So he comes in for one play to spell McLeod. And he's going to get helped off by the training staff. Bad news for the Raiders offense. They're going to have to punt this away. Fourth down and we'll call it 13 from their own 17. Now, this will really put Roswell in business with Slade back there, Chris. Should get a return out of this one. Wurtz back to punt, standing at his own four. So a big stand and a big play by the Hornets' defense on the heels of that 85-yard touchdown play. And we're going to have flags before the play. That will be a false start and march 
Walton even further back toward their goal line. Line of scrimmage will become the 12. So Roswell, Chris, really going go to go to work in excellent territory. They will be on the plus side of the field. When Michan Slade fields this thing, they are in good shape. Yeah, Walton really needs a big kick from their uh, sophomore Wurtz. Left for the kicker. He had a big warm-up. He was, he was really belting that football in warm-ups. was watching both punters work. Doesn't have enough time to really get his foot into this one. It's off the side of his foot. And that will take a Roswell bounce at the 35-yard line. And look at that. The Hornets will go to work at the 34. So credit the defense there with a great job of stifling McLeod and company, knocking Price out of the game. Pressure on the kicker, net 14 yards on the punt, Kevin. That will hurt. He was really under pressure, Chris. He did not have a chance to step into that one and put any kind of leg into it. Slade wasn't even going to go near it. And now Monty and company will go back to work with a very short field. And we saw this last week with Loganville as well, Chris. Every time Gainesville turned it over to Loganville, they had very short fields to work with, and they really took advantage. Here's Monty. Play action to Quateng. Gives it to him. And Andrew's going to try to break tackles. So they're going to say his knee was down back at the 30-yard line, but he is not going to give up. He is a stout runner. Yeah, we saw him a few weeks ago, as we mentioned, against, Walt, against uh, Wheeler, and the kid's amazing. He actually got a little dinged up with that game, if I remember correctly, but he came back in the game and really, really is one of the top running backs in this region, if not the entire state of Georgia. Big track star, too, here at Roswell High School. Andrew Quatang got a brother, Jonathan, who's a sophomore. Also plays for the Hornets. Call it a gain of three, second down and seven from just inside the 30. Little trouble with the snap, but Monty gets it to Quateng, puts his head down, and he'll muscle forward very close to a Roswell first down. Pretty good uh, low-level tackle that time by Taquar Stewart. Stewart actually was the one who got ran over temporarily but held on to the ankle of Quateng and made a pretty good tackle. You always see the effective running backs, Chris, the guys that are successful, the ones that initiate contact at the point where they meet the defender, and Quatang did just that. And that will be good enough for a first down, so the Hornets move the chains down inside the 25 to the 23, and Monty and company will go to work there. They go inside this time. Not much happening. Like Casey Cornett on the carry. Check that, Seibert gets the carry. A couple of white jerseys in there on the tackle, including number four, Christian Burlock. I'll bring up a second down and eight for the Hornets. Monty with two wide receivers to the near side. But it's going to be a toss to Quatang. He cuts it back up inside off tackle. Not much there. May have gathered one. And that'll bring up a third down and about six. Good tackle that time by number 26, Jordan Vorster. So it looks like the Raiders have got a call on their defense now, Chris. Try to hold the Hornets and force them to a field goal attempt. Because all the momentum right now is with the home side. Watch Barton. Barton was the man when they needed a big play on third down in the first drive. And he is set to the near side, one-on-one. -on -one. Third down and six. Monty looking far side, now fires, and got a man at the 10, and he steps out of bounds. That will be good enough for a first down. Looks like Barton over there on the receiving end. No secret no. who your go-to guy is. It was Barton. It was Barton on the far side, okay. Roswell doing the announcers no favors with those uniforms here tonight. Michane Slade in the ball game for Roswell wearing number one. First down and ten. They can get a first down inside the two. Monty to Quatang, and he is wrapped up and in trouble in the backfield. He will go down at the 17-yard line. Good penetration there. Again, number 47 making a big impact. Jordan Davidpour for the Raiders. Looks like Blake Mont's also in the tackle that time, senior linebacker. Talented group of linebackers that we've seen so far here for, for the Raiders. Well, Chris, we talked about it. Evan Goff's team, the Raiders coming in number three in the region, seven and two on the season. They have won three in a row coming in here tonight, and we are tied at seven with 3.15 to play in the first quarter. 
Monty with Quateng in the backfield. Now lost one into the corner. Yep. Ooh, just knocked away a great job on defense by Colby Billings. And Chris, that looked like it was dialed up for a touchdown. Billings managed to get a finger on it and break it up. Wide receiver ran a really good route. He had a step, but as you said, the defensive back closed really well and just got a finger on it to cause the incompletion. Call it third down and 14 for the Hornets. They can get a first down inside the two. Three minutes, three seconds to play in a tied first quarter, 7-7. Monty from the shotgun, Quateng behind him. Looking for Quateng on the screen, but he did not make it out of the backfield, and Monty paid the price back at the 30, and that looks like it will bring up a field goal attempt for the Hornets. Blake Mont once again on the pressure that time. And Walton's defense holds. Give him credit. Roswell could line up for three, but after... Roswell started the drive inside Walton's 35-yard line. The Walton Raider defense stiffened. So it'll be Barton with a 32-yard field goal attempt to give Roswell the lead on fourth down and 14. A good snap, a good set, and a good kick, but it's no good. He pushed it off to the right. So Barton misses from 32. So, Kevin, the Raiders dodge a really uh, a bullet there. As I mentioned, uh, a poor punt gave Roswell the ball inside Walton 35-yard line. Roswell did get one first down but couldn't do anything after that. Forced a field goal attempt, and it was wide to the right. I'd say if you're the Walton defense, you are um, taking a, little, uh, a sigh of relief at this point. They dodged a huge bullet there, Chris. A short field for the Hornets, all the momentum they had and could not cash in after a great job on defense. They sniffed out that screen, put the pressure on Monty, put them in a long down and distance, and forced the field goal attempt, and they have got the payoff. Right up the middle this time with Powers, D.J. Smith. Ball's down. The ball came out, I believe. Looked like he was down. down well down there, Chris. And Parker McLeod back into the football game at quarterback for the Walton Raiders. Kevin. We saw Price Wilson, sorry, Chris Price Wilson, the junior, helped off the field last series, and that's got McLeod back in the game. Watch Stone Romberg, senior wideout. He wears number six. Anytime he gets single coverage against him, Walton likes to go to him. Also, they like going to uh, Maurice Gibson, the fleet-footed junior wide receiver as well. Looks like Gibson lined up to the uh, near side here. D.J. Smith good enough for a first down. And it will be first and 10 Raiders. They go back to Smith, and he's got forward motion. Looks like to about the 32-yard line, and he'll go down there after a short game. So in the absence of Tyron Jones, Chris, it looks like D.J. Smith going to be the man here tonight. We also see Henry Rowling in the backfield, but Rowling right now has been primarily reserved for quarterback protection as part of that backfield formation. Craig Bowie, Asher Jones on the tackle that time for Roswell. Second down, we'll call it seven. From the Walton 33. Tied at seven, under two to play first quarter here from the Hornets Nest. Got ourselves a good one. McLeod play action to Smith, rolling. Now firing wide open and misses his receiver. Chrissy had all day to get that done. Looking for Brad Green, the senior tight end, and just missed him. That thing was looking good until he was overthrown. Green did a good job. He kind of snuck behind the linebackers and was about five yards ahead of the uh, secondary and just off the fingertips, but a very, very good play. McLeod made that harder than it had to be. He was not under pressure rolling. Green had no one within seven or eight yards of him. Just had to put it somewhere where he could put a palm on it and just could not do it. So a big third down coming up now. Third down and seven. McLeod in the shotgun with Smith to his left. McLeod to throw, looking screen near side. He goes to Smith, and Smith with room down the near sideline. Coming to be yanked out of bounds at the 50. Yanked out of bounds inside Roswell territory to the 48-yard line. So Chris once again taking advantage of an aggressive defense. They go with the screen, McLeod to Smith, and that's good enough for a Walton Raider first down. Looks like one of the coaches was really getting into the ear of, of senior linebacker Grant Beidel. They felt like he had the angle to uh, maybe stop Smith before he was able to get the first down. But Kevin, 
it's hard to coach against speed, and that's what we see here. And we're going to have an execution mistake there by the Raiders. False start on the near side. Looked like John France, a little eager, and that will cost them five, so they'll march back into their own territory and bring up a first down and 15. Looked like they were rushing for a hurry-up kind of formation, Chris, and the left side just got a little eager, and that'll cost them five. Everybody's got to be on the same page or that uh, hurry-up offense is for naught. Exactly 90 seconds to play, first quarter. From the Hornets' Nest at Roswell High School, we are tied at seven. A couple of big pass plays got us here. 34-yard reception, McLeod to Craig for Walton, and 85 yards, Monty to Bennett. Barton, a great play to tie it up. Now first and 15 for the Raiders. Going to be D.J. Smith. He tries the edge, and he's going to be brought down near the original line of scrimmage. Not much happening there. Be about third down, call it 11. Senior defensive back Demetri Soto on the tackle that time for Roswell. Clock continues to run down toward one minute to play, first quarter. Second down and 11. Just inside Roswell territory. Tight formation for McLeod. Fakes to Smith, now fires near side. And that is going to be, look like pass interference to me, Chris. The defender knocked the receiver's hands out of the way before he had a chance. Maurice Gibson, the intended receiver. And Chris, it looked like his hands just got swatted down before the ball got there. So It looked as if the defender could have actually turned and tried to swat the football, but instead he went straight for the receiver. And more times than not, the defending person is going to lose that battle. Easy call for the official on the near side. If Kevin Beck can call it, the near side official can call it. That was a pretty elementary call there. And, Chris, that's another mental mistake by that defense. You mentioned it taking a bad angle a moment ago. And it plays like that when you have the kind of time to make a play on the football. Don't get lazy and just swat at the receiver's hands. That will cost him. Well, you've got to turn around and look at the football. And I don't think the defender did that that time. He just kind of almost looked at the receiver and be, by the reaction of the receiver he knew the ball was coming towards the receiver but a, a big break for Walton as they continue this drive it'll be first and 10 following the penalty at the 34 yard line high formation behind McLeod and it's going to be a give this time trying that right side just as Bailey and he's going to have a couple Possibly get another play in before the end of the first quarter. 20 seconds now, 19 and counting. Second and nine. They will get this play off if they go quickly, and they do. Bailey again, right side, moves the pile inside the 30. And that will bring up a fourth down and a couple. And we will have that play when we go to work in the second quarter. So that'll do it after one. We are tied at seven. And remember, football fans, if you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight, tell your school to sign up for the PlayOnSports.com school broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to PlayOnSports.com slash SBP. We'll take a break. At the end of one, from Roswell High School, it's Roswell 7, Walton 7. We'll be right back.
set for second quarter action here at the Hornet's Nest. Kevin Beck, Chris King, our production team of Jason and Kenny. We are thrilled to be with you on a Friday night here in Roswell, Georgia. The Walton Raiders and the Roswell Hornets. We are tied at seven. And a big play coming up right now, Chris, as we get set to go with second quarter action. I may have misspoke earlier. It's third down and six for the Walton Raiders. Big play here inside Hornet territory, tied at seven. McLeod on the give to DJ Smith, drives right up right tackle, and he's going to be forced back short of the first down. Now we'll have ourselves a fourth down. Pretty good defensive play. Stood up right there after a couple of uh, yards. Trying to catch the number. Looks like it was uh, that was a Bidell and uh, Chris Bryant also in on the uh, tackle. So here's a big play, Chris. Looks like they are going to go and go for it on fourth and a couple. Roswell had an opportunity to take the lead. Bennett missed a 32-yarder. Now this is fourth and a couple for Parker McLeod and the Raider offense. They go to DJ Smith left side. He's got big room hole. and more. Still carrying tacklers inside the 10. So on fourth and two. They pick up about 14 or 15, and that will be first and goal. Big hole on the left side that time, Kevin. And he Huge just keeps hole. those legs churning, Chris. DJ Smith, a nice compliment to that backfield. When they get Ty Tyron Jones back, that is going to be a formidable offense for anybody to face. Jones. Junior. You say knee down at the 10. Pardon me, Chris. Getting a lot of experience. And as you uh, mentioned, when you can get a situation when you have a one-two punch, possibly coming back next week for the postseason run. That is definitely an advantage for Walton. Once again, Smith on the carry left side. They really like to run behind that left tackle, Chris, and that's working for him. That'd be second down and goal. Just outside the five. Greg Hill in on the tackle. Big senior defensive lineman, Hill. Just underway in the second quarter from Roswell High School. Walton Raiders heading for the postseason. Roswell trying to put a positive stamp on their season. They've got to stand tall here. Second and goal for the Raiders. DJ Smith another time left side. Puts his foot in the ground. Nice drives toward the end zone. No official signal yet. Very close. Parker McLeod back there. Had his arms in the air. He thought his running back was going to get in. But he's going to be just short, Chris, probably about a foot away from Pater. It looked as if Smith was going to go to the corner and try to dive at that pylon, but he saw a couple of green jerseys and did a good job of cutting to the inside and getting inside the one-yard line, and it's really, really close. Just the nose of the football in the shadow of the goal line. Big play here. Third down and inches. McLeod going to turn and give it to Smith, and he is in. As soon as he got the football, Chris, he was basically in the end zone. Well deserved. He did, he did most of the work on that particular drive, at least when it got down inside the red zone, and he deserved the touchdown. Pretty good drive that time by Walton as they regained the lead. That's another 80-yard drive, Chris. So Walton go back up on top. Price, his kick is up. A little spinner. Barely got underneath that one, but he does drive it through, and that makes it 14 to seven in favor of the visiting Walton Raiders. It's okay. Made him earn that one though, Chris. No big pass plays on that drive. They really had to grind that one out. Yeah, I was just going to say you've seen two two different types of drives. The first drive for Walton was a nice drive, but it was culminated by one huge big play. Roswell came back and they had one big one big play themselves to put their points on the board. But Walton showed the type of offense that I think we're going to see for the majority of the ball game for the Walton Raiders as long as they have the lead, which is grind them out, you know, put the ball in the air when you need to, but leave it on the ground between the tackles and allow the speed of DJ Smith to get to the outside. Talked about it during the open. Both teams come in averaging just under 24 points a game. Now, Walton has allowed only 189 points, where Roswell has allowed 225 on defense. That's the difference, but virtually a deadlock, 23-9 versus 23-8 as far as points per game scored between these two teams. 
pretty tough schedule for both teams, too, when you have to run through Lassiter, of course, his Walton team, a good Milton team, a good Etowah team, a good Woodstock team. You know, that, that's tough region play. And I do know that Walton started out at the Corky Kell Classic in the Georgia Dome and beat a pretty good Brookwood team. Slade and Albert back deep to receive for the Hornets. Mason ready to kick. Puts a good leg in it. This one will be returned. Looks like Albert is going to have room up the right side. He puts his head down, and he's met hard there. Looks like Christian Burlock, first man to get there. And the Hornets will go back to work now, trailing 14-7, 9-17 to play until halftime. And we're in that time of the uh, game, Kevin, where you're starting to look. What's Roswell going to do? Are they going to put the ball in Quateng's hands and try to methodically move this ball down the field knowing that they do get the ball at the beginning of the second half? Are they going to try to lie it up? We'll see. Shown pretty good variety between pass and run so far. They've got that big weapon, Bennett, on the far sideline, and they are going to go to the air out near the 29-yard line. John Albert on the receiving end there. It looks like he was brought down by Colby Billings. So they do go to the air. Ryan Monty, the quarterback, mixing it up. Very experienced team here, Kevin, with a lot of seniors and a lot of juniors playing for Walton. We'll call it second down and three from the Roswell 30. Monty trouble with the snap, barely gets a hold of it before he's brought down back at the 24-yard line. Nothing he could do, Chris. Did a nice job of just holding on to that football. Looked like a tough snap, went right through his fingertips. And by the time he caught it, the senior linebacker, Blake Monts, was there to greet him. Tough break for Roswell. Can ill afford plays like that against a very tough Walton Raider defense? Third down and eight for the Hornets. Monty in the shotgun at his own 20. Better snap this time. Monty with time, goes over the middle, got a man complete. That's Mishan Slade. And he's very close to a Roswell first down, but he's going to be about a yard and a half short, Chris. Yeah, good job by Billings. Now they're going to say his knee was down at the just outside the 30, so a little further than we thought. I'll bring up fourth down and a couple. You got to punt the football. Got to kick the football away, and that is exactly what Justin Sanderson sends his team out to do. So you have, you have to think the play where the high snap went over the quarterback's head, and he caught it, and he took Basically a, a giveaway yeah, took play. Sack. You lose a down. Exactly. So Di Roberto stands back at his own 16-yard line. Dangerous D.J. Smith. Very dangerous D.J. Smith. Di Roberto with a great foot. A lot of air under this one, probably not as far as he'd like. It's going to take a very nice Roswell bounce and continue to roll. And this will help Di Roberto's stats. It's touched at the 27-yard line, and that is where Walton will go to work. Di Roberto, very fortunate, Kevin. He took his time kicking that football, and it was almost blocked. I, Chris, I was mentioning... I was, was thinking that and noting that during the warm-ups. He's got great motion, got a great leg, but he does take a long couple of strides back there, which at this level is very difficult for a punter to do. So here come the Raiders with 7.35 to play and the lead in the half. Normally, this would be a situation where you see a boatload of Tyron Jones, but as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, he's not playing, but very formidable backup, D.J. Smith in the ballgame for Walton. From the 27, Rowling in motion. Stretch play goes to Smith. Little hesitation and a burst up the middle and a touchdown saving tackle in the secondary because Smith had a head of speed and he was off to the races had it not been for a great job on defense. Joe Cook was a, was a right guard who pulled to the left and he made the block that sprung DJ Smith right up the middle. Alex Brandeis, Chris, I'm sorry, Alex Brandeis saved a touchdown because it looked like DJ Smith hesitated in the hole when he saw that daylight. He grabbed a gear and he was in the secondary before you could blink and Brandeis did a nice job. Got an official's timeout. And Chris, I think that might have been a warning for the band. We've seen, it all. We've seen it all this year, Kevin. Yes, we have, partner. Yes, we have. That's within the rules, but you very rarely see it called. So a warning for the band to play or not play. 
during the opponent's possession. Very interesting. First down and 10 from the 41-yard line. Parker McLeod and the Raider offense back to work. They keep working that left side just as Bailey is going to move the pile across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Kevin, I've got to go back to that warning they gave the Roswell band. Do you think it might be because there is no Walton band here? Chris, it very well could be. That's an excellent point. Walton did not bring a band tonight. It's equal time and equal opportunity rule to, I guess, it well, two affect the football game. Two firsts for me. This is the first time I've ever seen the band get a warning, and I'd have to say this might be the first time I've ever seen a team travel without their band. And it's not that far a ride from Marietta over to Roswell. Interesting there, Chris. We might get a little insight on that during halftime and pass that along to you. Back to Bailey one more time. Hop, skip across the right side. And he's going to be near midfield but short of a Walton first down. It'll be third down and probably one. They need the Roswell 49. And Kevin Walton showing their depth at running back. You know, two pretty good running backs playing the bulk of the, uh, the uh, yardage for Walton and their um, – all-state running back is not even playing tonight. Excellent, excellent depth at the back position. That's why they're number three in the region, Chris, heading for the postseason. One more time with Bailey. Two hands on Huge the football hole. and his head down, and he bulls his way inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. So what a great compliment to the swift D.J. Smith. They go Justice Bailey, the bull back, and he does a nice job of just busting tackles inside the 40. So, Chris, you called that one. They're going to go ground and pound, control, possess the football because they know they've got to kick off starting third quarter. And as I mentioned, with a, a team that averages under 25 points a game, you don't really expect them to put the ball in the air and air it out a little bit. The ground attack is what has been successful for Walton. Got to give a call to that offensive line of the Walton Raiders. They go back to Bailey again with his head down, two hands on the football, and they're going to gang tackle him this time after a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. The three or four green jerseys in there. It's like Devontae Hill, first man to meet him. The Craig Bowie also in there. Five minutes to play until halftime. Walton with the football and the lead, 14-7. Like Walton Smith. taking the lead on a one-yard TD run by D.J. Smith. Sorry, Chris. I was going to say, it looks like Smith's back in the ballgame. So Bailey gets a breather. Smith gets the football with room to the outside. Now it's a foot race to the cone. A stiff arm on the outside. And boy, Chris, when he hits the edge, he is very quick. That's going to be a first down for the Raiders inside the 25-yard line of the Roswell Hornets. It's almost like hesitate, hesitate, wait a minute, wait for it, wait for it, boom. And when he saw that room to the outside, he wasted no time. He's got those long sprinter-like legs, Chris, and he is quick when he gets to the edge. That's going to be a Roswell timeout, their first of the half. Right now, Kevin, no secret, Walt Walton is winning this game right now at the line of scrimmage. They're being very successful running the ball to the outside. They're getting the blocks to the outside when they need it. They're getting excellent interior blocking, and they're just running the football and that might be a pretty good timeout for Roswell, if nothing else, just to kind of get a breather. And, Chris, the biggest defensive play we've seen from the Hornets was the sack on the prior possession by Walton to force them into a punting situation. But other than that, we really haven't seen Roswell show the ability to stop the run. Right side, left side, both edges have worked for D.J. Smith. So right now, Walton is having their way with them on the ground. Well, as I said, a very experienced, very well-polished ball club here, Walton. They had a brutal schedule. They had a a really tough region schedule, which Roswell plays just the same region schedule, but Walton also playing a couple of tough teams out of region, out of conference as well. So um, this might be a situation where you're starting to see the difference between a Walton team with a little bit more experience and a Roswell team that's trying to hang on, for, for lack of a better phrase. Well, they're going to have to find an answer on defense right now because McLeod and company are having their way with them. First down and 10. Quick snap. They go to Smith on the outside. Gets a block. Turns it upfield. Shakes tacklers inside the 10 down near the 7-yard line. And he is explosive when he gets a hole, Chris. He is through it in a blink of an eye. And then with those high leg kicks, he is tough to bring down. Yeah, once again, a great block on the right, on the left side there. Joe Cook lines up at right guard and came across once again and laid an excellent block. And Smith knows where he needs to go. Walton knows where they need to go. They're running the ball to the left side all the time. 
They go on the first sound. They go back to Bailey this time. He puts his head down. He's inside the five. Flags come in late at the point of contact. Back judge threw that flag in from the back of the end zone. We'll sort out that call. Bit of relatively mistake-free game in the way of penalties, Chris. Haven't seen that many flags on the field so far tonight. Maybe uh, oh, face, mask. face mask. And that's going to hurt Roswell. That'll be an automatic first down. It was going to be, well, it was a first and goal situation anyway. Now they're just going to be half the distance. Roswell's defense looks a little tired. They Kevin. do, I Chris. See, I see a couple of guys over there, you know, with their hands on their hips. They, they, Walton's really pounded it. Pounded the ball at Roswell in this down, this drive. And, Chris, they're not passing the ball, speaking of Walton, so they're really not giving Roswell the opportunity to blitz because if you blitz into that run game, you've really opened up a bag of trouble. Clock running now, 4.15 to play until halftime. McLeod goes first sound again. Bailey left side, puts his head down, gets nailed, but he's going to fall into the end zone. Touchdown from three yards out, just as Bailey pads the Walton lead. Walton football. Ball control, ground attack, usually turns into something positive. That's what happened that time for the Raiders. An excellent drive, and they pad their lead. That'll bring Anthony Price in to try to make it 21-7 to with four minutes and four seconds to play until halftime, so the Hornets will get another opportunity. And that kick is up, and that kick is good. And that makes it 21-7 to in favor of Walton after the three-yard blast by Bailey. So three different guys scoring for Walton tonight. Craig on a 34-yard reception. D.J. Smith a one-yard blast. And now Bailey gets his opportunity to get on the score sheet. A three-yard TD run for Justice Bailey. So if you're the Roswell Hornets now, Chris, you know you've got this possession and you're going to get the first possession of the third quarter. You've got to go ahead and possess this football for the rest of the second, or second quarter, first half. Keep that... Walton offense off the field. Maybe have find a way to climb back in this way. You're going to be two for one on possessions to use the basketball vernacular. So we'll see how that goes and see how they play it out. And if I'm Roswell, I give it to Quatang. Quatang's the man. I mean, he is the one that can make things happen, even though it's going you know, to keep it on the ground. This kid's phenomenal. He's proven it game after game after game. Give it to him. Let him create something. And more times than none, he's going to break one. And based on that, Chris, the fact that they've got two possessions coming up here, it's really not desperation time. They've got to put a couple of good drives together here. And what and they don't want to do is they don't want to go three and out and give Walton the ball back before halftime. Absolutely not. That would be catastrophic for the Hornets offense right now. Both teams with a full allotment of timeouts. Roswell used one a moment ago, so they've got two. Walton, of course, does have their three. And Mason set to kick it off. A line drive is going to short skip. And that is going to be, looks like Albert on the far side. Cuts it out at the 20, and he's going to be dragged out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. 3.56 to play until halftime. And, Chris, here we go. The Hornets have got to put together some sort of sustained drive, Keep, give their defense a breather, if nothing else, get a few first downs. They know they're going to get the football to start the third quarter. Offensive line needs to step up and give their quarterback time if they're going to put this ball in the air. And what they need to do is they need to run patterns that are good enough to get the first down so they can stop the clock and move the chains. They try to find a way to get this crowd back in it on senior night here at Roswell High School. Ryan Monty, the quarterback, in trouble. Almost loses the football. And he's going to go down in the arms of a couple of tacklers back there. Looked like Sebastian Cavello, first man to wrap him up, and he got some help, Chris. But again, a little trouble handling the football for Ryan Monty out there. Well, I think one of the reasons why is he had big number 66, who virtually came untouched through the middle of the line. And I just mentioned that the Roswell offensive line has to give their quarterback time to create, to make some plays. It has to. So, Chris, this is worst-case scenario that we just discussed. Second down and 20 for Monty and the Hornets. Oh. From the shotgun, give it to Quatang on the draw. Man around his ankles, he will drag him to the 20. And that's going to bring up a third down and 15. Clock continues to run. Three minutes to play until halftime. 
Kevin, it wouldn't surprise me if Walton stops Roswell on third down. It wouldn't surprise me if they call timeout. They've got their full complement. That would be good strategy here. Let's see what they elect to go with. They went with the draw that time to Quateng to try to catch the Raiders by surprise, but nothing doing. Third and 15. Spread offense this time for Monty. He's in the shotgun back at the 15. Quateng behind him. A high snap. They go with Quateng on the draw. Another time fooling no one. And he's going to lose a handful back to the 17-yard line. Just what Roswell didn't want, three and out. Surprisingly, Walton not calling the timeout. If, if it was me, I'd call timeout, make Roswell kick the football, especially knowing you'd have two-plus minutes left on the clock. And you saw what happened the last time Roswell's kicker tried to kick. It was not a positive result. So the Walton Raiders will get the football back, 21-7 their lead. DiRoberto stands back at his five. A little more time this time. This one's going to be an end-over-end -end wobbler. And we'll take another great Roswell bounce. DiRoberto really living right. And that's going to go all the way down to the 33-yard line. A great job by DiRoberto. Let that thing bounce short and get past the receiver. And that will force Walton to go the distance with 143 to play until halftime. And as you said, Chris, three timeouts. And I agree with you. I think maybe a couple of minutes ago I would have burned one of those as when they saw that they were driving Roswell's offense in the wrong direction. Great time to use a timeout there and stretch the half. Yeah, good bounce for the uh, Roswell kicker. And Kevin, once again, he's very methodical, taking his time, wants to make sure that he is in stride when he kicks that football. But I think he needs to speed up his process just a little bit. Very deliberate in his motion. That might wind up costing him if Walton get aggressive on special teams later in this thing. First and 10. Raiders, 21-7 lead. They go to D.J. Smith another time. Dances through the hole to the 35. Ball is given to number 21, D.J. Smith. That was Hunter Hill on the tackle that time for Roswell. And, Chris, I think Coach Evan Goff over there on the Raiders' sideline is fairly content to just take this thing to the locker room with a 21-7 lead. you got the ball in the middle of the field. You've got an offense that's capable of moving the ball in big chunks. You've got three timeouts left. I kind of think I would maybe try something. Second down, we'll call it six. One minute, nine seconds to play until halftime. McLeod goes play action to Smith, looking to throw. Does fire downfield and got a man at the 50 who's nailed. Great job on the tackle. Stone Romberg on the receiving end. And a nice lick laid on him. Was that a Ryan Monty? No, actually, that was uh, Demetrius Soto, and he laid a lick. You are right, Kevin. He really nailed him, wrapped him up there. And, Chris, as we said, those numbers on those jerseys not helping the announcers at all tonight. I mean, the spy glasses in this. I still had a little <laughs> tough time. First down and 10 from their own 48-yard line. 46 seconds to play until halftime. McLeod in the shotgun, empty backfield this time. Watch Smith in the flash. Little flare to DJ Smith, but that was quickly read and snuffed out. A nice job there, Grant Bidell. Johnny on the spot, and there goes a timeout for the Walton Raiders. 37 seconds left on the clock. Well, at least we know Walton's still trying to line up and try to get the ball downfield, at least for a field goal. I just kind of question the fact that they allowed so much time to go off before they even called their first timeout. So that gives that Roswell defense a chance to take a breath here in this final 37 seconds. Looking for an answer. Remember, Roswell will get the football to start the third quarter. Good news for the Hornets if they can just try to contain Walton for the final half a minute or so. It'll be second down. We'll call it five from the 48-yard line. And Kevin, plenty of time left on the clock, too, if nothing else getting field goal range. I mean, the ball's going to be snapped from the 43-yard line, so you got to figure you need a good 30 yards or so to give your kicker a legitimate shot. And I don't want to jinx it, partner, but we have seen a relatively mistake-free game played here tonight. Not a lot of flags on the field. Well-coached teams on both sides of the field. Back to action we go. 37 seconds to play. McLeod to throw on play action. Looking downfield and got a man wide open. And that's broken up. Nice defensive play. Both players going for the football, so no flags down there. And it looked like the intended receiver fell awkwardly on his shoulder. 
And he is hurt down at the five. That was at high speed, Chris. Both guys went for the football. And it looked like he came down very awkwardly on the shoulder. And Kevin, another great pass, but a little bit too much air under the ball. The receiver had a step. Putting air under the ball allowed the defensive back to get back and make the play. I'm not able to catch the number, but uh, as you did say, he did go down hard and it looked like it was uh, the shoulder. That play did hold up the receiver just a bit, Chris. I think if he'd let that ball out there and let the receiver run under it, he had a better chance, but it looked like he had to hold up a little bit, and that caused both guys to go up for the football, the collision in midair, and then a very hard landing. And that'll be a break in the action. And good news, he is up. It's Ryan Craig, the man who caught the first touchdown of the football game, Chris. So looks like he's up. and I might have gotten the wind knocked at him. Looks like he's going to be okay walking off the field under his own power. Always great news when you see one of these young men get up and make it off the field without assistance. So good news there for Ryan Craig. Talking to one of the uh, coaches for Walton before the game, they mentioned that over the last couple of weeks they've had – a lot of their top talent on the bench. Not only was it Tyron Jones, but the description that was that was used as four or five of their D1 type prospects have been on the bench. That doesn't mean they're out. They're not playing tonight, but they have been bitten by the injury bug. And the last thing they need is to have somebody else go out, especially one of their um, seniors. That's Ryan Craig. We'll call it third down and 15 now. For the Raiders, McLeod in the shotgun. Goes Statue of Liberty to DJ Smith. He looks for a hole and finds one at midfield, sprinting across midfield. And he's going to be knocked out of knocked down just past first down yardage. Chris looks like he's going to have another first down for Walton. So they'll move the chain, stop the clock. And 19 seconds to play. And Roswell scrambling to make substitutions as Walton hurries back to the line. And now they've got to get the chain gang caught up. And they will wind the clock there. McLeod looking outside quickly. Got a man on the sideline at the 35-yard line. Stone Romberg on the receiving end. Chris, I think the hurry-up set is really confusing Roswell right now. He was wide open on the far side. Nobody near him. Good safe play. They've got 10 seconds on the clock and one timeout. And right now, the ball's on the 35-yard line, so you're looking at a 52-yard field goal. You'd like to think that Walton has at least enough time to try to get another 8 to 10 yards before they bring in their field goal. Kicker. And, Chris, they can use the entire field. They've got the timeouts. They can go down the middle, make a completion, and call timeout. Ten seconds, generally two plays, unless the quarterback has to run around too much. We'll see what McLeod elects to do. Four wideouts for him now on second down and a couple. McLeod to throw, looking, looking. In trouble in the backfield. Now he's going to just drop this one down at the ankles of Henry Rowling out there, the intended receiver. And that'll leave us four seconds to play until halftime. So one chance for a Hail Mary now to wrap up this first half. Is it a Hail Mary or are they going to line up for a potential long field goal? Oh, i got a flag on the play, Chris. Intentional grounding, Chris. So that'll march him back to takes the field goal attempt out of play. Was he out of the tackle box? Maybe that's the no, reason I thought, why. No, I thought he threw that in the direction of the receiver. Rolling was there. I thought it was close enough, but they're going to say intentional grounding. So it'll be at the 45-yard line with four seconds to play until halftime. Should be the final play. Looks like they're just going to take a victory formation, Chris. No chances here and just take a knee to wind this one up. Evan Goff playing it safe here to wrap up the first half with a 21-7 lead. Parker McLeod will do just that, and that's how we will go to the halftime locker room. Walton 20, 21 and Roswell 7. Football fans, remember, Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter 24-7, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Stay on top of it on Facebook and Twitter wherever you are, and you can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. That brings us to halftime at the Hornets Nest. With your score, the Walton Raiders 21 and the Roswell Hornets 7.
We'll be back with halftime activities right after this. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just... <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I sack. 3.16 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown. Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24.
Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over, dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the Stag. Runner at third is Chavez, eight to two the score. Bottom of the seventh, the one two. Popped in the air, this should do it. Corta Posse says it's mine. Now he's fading on it. And he can't make the catch, but Gaff comes in from center field and does. Congratulations to the St. Mary's Rams, a three-peat. They win it eight to two against Franklin to take the series two games to none. This is time to run an offensive set that you've done all through the season in practice. Yeah. And you also, you know, you get it to your to your hottest player right now, just like they're getting into Eichhorst right here. He's going to try to create some space, find somebody on the backside that's open. Eichhorst flush out to the right. Oh, breaks free of a player. Eichhorst on his own, shoots and scores, bounces the shot home. Kuz can't handle the shot. Eichhorst takes off the shirt and the helmet. And how about that? Alex called it. Eichhorst, after sustaining the injury in the third quarter of play, has scored the game winner with 22 seconds gone in the overtime period. Dog pile on the field. Marin Academy take it. A fantastic finish to this game. And, well, I hope his other ankle isn't hurting after this. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter that's under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near the goal line. Keep those Lowell fans quiet over there. Lum sets it up for Pang. Long, it's out. Low, a magnificent seven titles in the San Francisco section in dramatic style as they pull out a fantastic victory over a spirited Galileo Lions team. They win the fourth game, 31-29, and they take the 2012 Academic Athletic Association San Francisco section title. Officials say no five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side, Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. 
St. Augustine has their first lead of the game, 21 to 20, with 25 seconds to play. The senior McMorrow with a huge kick, not the longest of his career, but the biggest of his career. Oh, St. Augustine leads it, 21 to. Already lining up, they won't even have to run that one more play. They just act no, yes. Why Here bother? So there you have it. Your five-time defending Division III champions, the Cathedral Catholic Dons, running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. And Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh, boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve. Championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's gonna bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity, look for Wallace, no, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace, for the match! <laughs> Kathleen Wallace, no better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation taking Neil. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone. Touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in. But that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that hey we didn't get shut out so 44 to 6 is your score and helix is celebrating on the sideline oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended two minutes and five seconds left on the clock clock rolling third down and 15 for the patriots dylan he's got time steps up He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zine rolls right. Here we go. And he
Welcome back, everybody. We are at halftime at the Hornets' Nest for Georgia High School Association. Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. Our game of the week tonight comes to you from Roswell High School, where the Walton Raiders have the lead, 21-7. to Kevin Beck along with Chris King. Chris, halftime just about over, but we've got enough time to recap the first half, which was a good one, and also talk about a little bit what's going on in the region. Let's recap the scoring. They came out, the Walton Raiders did, with the football and wound up an 80-yard drive with a 34-yard pass to Ryan Craig. And then Roswell answered right back on that huge 85-yard touchdown play. The pass to Bennett Barton, which was really about a 10-yard pass and a very exciting 75-yard run. And then it became Walton's ball game. A couple of short plunges, DJ Smith and Justice Bailey getting their chance to get on the score sheet. And that gets us right here to 21-7. Big point was the missed field goal by Roswell, the 32-yarder that went awry. So right now, 21-7. But the good news is Roswell gets the football to start third quarter. Yeah, add, add in to the... Uh semi-misery there for Roswell, a high snap on third down, that uh, on second down that their quarterback ended up catching and they ended up getting sacked, which as you mentioned was almost like a, giving away a free, giving away a down, and then subsequently not being able to convert on third down. And then after that, the very methodical way of the Roswell kicker punting, punting the football, which netted only 14 yards, and that gave Walton the ball and that turned around and allowed them to put their second touchdown of the uh, second quarter on the board, which gave them a 14-point lead here at halftime. So the Walton Raiders come in. They're 7-2 and two on the season, looking for postseason action. Roswell not so lucky, 2-7 and seven coming in. So let's talk a little bit about the region implications as a result of what's happening here tonight. You've got some action from around the region, Chris. Yeah, these are all second quarter updates. Milton all over Woodstock. That's the score of 28 to nothing. And we talked about the, the importance of that game with a Milton trying to uh, hold on to the third spot in the region. Woodstock trying to get up in there in the top four. In the second quarter, Wheeler 14 and Cherokee 10. Wheeler trying to get themselves in a situation if things go right, maybe a couple of mini play-in games on Monday. And also in the second quarter, surprisingly, Etowah hanging around with Lassiter. Lassiter, one of the top teams in the nation. Second quarter action, Lassiter 14, Etowah zero so things are kind of playing out i'll try to get more updates as i can if i can later on but right now those are your updates in region 5 6 a those teams from cherokee county need to do uh go back and do a little bit of homework woodstock and edwell right now they've been uh getting beaten up on by a lot of these teams in the region. Kind of interesting, the last hitter score over Etowah, 14 to nothing, Chris, but the way those teams have been going, that score might as well be about 28 to nothing, the way Etowah has been playing. And the, the Wheeler score is a little surprising as well that that game is as close as it is. Interesting scenario. Um, everything is playing out in the, in the advantage of Wheeler. What had to happen for Wheeler to slide up into the play-in games was that Wheeler had to beat Ch Wheeler had to uh, beat Cherokee. They're beating Cherokee so far. Lasseter had to beat Etowah. They're beating Etowah so far, 14 to nothing. And Milton had to beat Woodstock, and they're up 28 to nothing. So if that stays the way it is, then you'll have a three-way tie for third place between Wheeler. Woodstock, excuse me, for, for fourth place between Wheeler, Woodstock, and Etowah, which means there'll be a, a couple of mini playing games somewhere in this area on Monday. And I tell you what, that would be great considering, you've, like I said, you have four teams that make the state playoffs out of this region. There are eight teams in this region, and of the eight, if this stays the way it is, six of them will have a chance to make the postseason as late as Monday. That's pretty Great that's pretty drama impossible. in the region. And also, Chris, a couple of good football teams are going to get left out in the cold. So you've got, you've got some, some bubble scenarios there, and we'll check more on that as the night progresses and keep up with those scores. But right now we have a good one going on here where Roswell has got to try to climb back into it. They trail 21-7, to the Walton Raiders behind Evan Goff, their head coach, looking for good things to happen. They've done a great job of filling in for Tyron Jones, their star running back with Chris. They haven't missed a beat with D.J. Smith and Justice Bailey out there. Yeah, we talked about the depth of good football teams. When you lose an impact player like Tyron Jones, you would think that the team would suffer just a little bit. What has happened is, as you mentioned, the uh, other two running backs have come in and done an, an amicable job. And what that does is when your stud running back comes back, that just makes you that much more dangerous. Walton, we, we talked about it. Ball control, large offensive line, um, good blocking, and a very, very good backfield. And when you've got two guys out there right now doing the job 
and you are pretty positive that your big time Alabama recruit, prospect <laughs> yeah is coming back things look well for Walton as I mentioned Walton one of the top teams perennially each and every each and every season doing a really good job and um, and what else not, that does yeah. Chris that makes you very tough to game plan against you keep rolling great talent in there and you start pairing up those guys in the backfield you you get Tyron Jones and DJ Smith in the backfield. Who do you key on? Then you bring in Justice Bailey with one of those guys. You've got lethal combinations, and Parker McLeod can just have his way with any defense he wants when he's got those kinds of weapons at his disposal. So as you said, Walton, perennially good and very good this year. With If this holds, holds up tonight, 8-2 and two heading into the postseason. Kevin, as we saw last week, uh, the underlog, underdog being down at halftime doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the ball game, but – you have to come out with a pretty good game plan. You do get the ball. You do get the ball at the beginning of the third quarter if you are Roswell. And what you want to do is you want to go down and you want to put points on the board quickly, and then you want to get your defense out there and have them stiffen up because it's only a two-touchdown game with the team behind getting the ball to start the second half. So what Roswell needs to do, they need to feed a lot of Quatang. I mean, he hadn't really seen the ball that much. And I know they're going to key on him, but you have to use him a lot. And then every once in a while, throw a play action. And, you, and, and when you throw that play action in there, he's just as valuable as he would be if he held the ball. And, Chris, if Roswell could just come out and put one touchdown on the board, it's a one-touchdown game with basically the whole second half to go. And we saw Loganville do it last week. Stay within yourselves. You're not down and out by any stretch, whereas Loganville appeared to be 21 points behind. They managed to come back, and right now, Good scenario for Roswell, but we saw it at the end of the second quarter. They were not able to put a couple of first downs together, and they gave Walton the football back with a couple of minutes to play. That cannot happen here in the third quarter, or they're going to be in too deep a hole. And that Roswell offensive line, it is it is vital that they give their quarterback time to sit back there and make plays. They are, they are going to throw the football a little bit just because they're behind, and you've got to open up a couple of holes for your stud running back, number 41, Quatang. Offensive line for Roswell, very, very important, maybe the most important factor here in the second half. They have to give their quarterback time and they have to open up holes to make Roswell positive gains. So we're going to see how it plays out with third quarter action after this. We'll be back in just a moment. It's 21-7 to Walton on top of Roswell. We want to remind our football fans that Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter 24-7 with news and information and links to all our great highlights. Keep us on your phone uh, tablet, whatever you're carrying these days. Facebook and Twitter is all over it, and so is Play On Sports. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. That's where I find it, and keep up with all the high school action every week. From your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. We'll be back with second half action from the Hornet's Nest in just a moment, where it's Walton 27 and Roswell 7. We'll be right back. And we are back to the Hornet's Nest, Roswell High School. 
PlayOnSports.com's Friday night game of the week. The Walton Raiders leading 21 to seven over the Roswell Hornets. Number three leading number eight in the region. Good news is for the Roswell Hornets and their senior night crowd that the Hornets will get the football to start the third quarter. And Chris, we documented during the halftime show, they've got to get something going, keep the ball away from that high-powered offense of Walton and see if they can climb back into this thing. A touchdown makes it a one-score game, but they've got to find a way and an answer to that Walton defense. Andrew Mason kicks it deep, and that will be a touchback. John Albert fields it, and they will go to work with Ryan Monty, the quarterback, from their 20. And, Chris, I think you are right on with your analysis there. We've got to see more Andrew Kwatang for the Hornets if they want to establish any kind of offense here and get back in this thing. Not only do they need to move the ball, they need to put points on the board. Down by 14, as I said, with the ball to begin the second half. Nothing you can't overcome, but you've got to start it right now. This is the time where we see the adjustments made in the halftime locker room. Let's see what Justin Sanderson has done with his offense, and he wants to go to the air. And he's got Bennett Barton on the near side, fighting for the football, going up for it. And that's going to be brought down. They're going to say complete at the 43-yard line. So right out of the gate, they go to the air, Chris. They must have heard you. They're going to open it up here, try to move the football and get some points on the board. Pretty good defense that time by sophomore Takar Stewart as well. But quarterback put air under the ball. Great concentration to bring the ball in. That's what the Roswell needed, a good positive gain on first down. Nice back shoulder throw there, and Barton went up and got it. First down and 10 from their own 44-yard line. 24-yard pickup, and here is Kwatang on the right edge. Slips a tackle, and support comes from the secondary. Nails him for a loss of one. He spent too much time on the edge there, Chris. That gave the secondary a chance to come up and support, and somebody really lowered the boom on him over there. Yeah, he's... he's, he's uh, I don't want to make this sound bad or anything, but he's too good to be running... You know, laterally, he needs to turn turn forward and get all the yards that he can, putting his nose forward because he's got such a low center of gravity and in big thighs, he's so strong. And we do have a player down on the far sideline. Looks like a Walton Raider. And that might have been the man that came up and really laid the hit on Quatang on the corner. Chris looked like he had about a 15-yard running start. I didn't get a number, and he really hammered him. Christian Burlock. And looks like he's shaken up, but he is off the field. More good news there that he's up and around. Monty. So Monty runs back in with the play. Second down and 11, first possession of the third quarter. Kevin Beck and Chris King with you. Kenny and Jason, our production team, also with you on a very crisp evening here in North Atlanta. They go to Quatang, left side, dances past the tackler in the backfield. That's what he's good at, Kevin. Wow, Chris, he made that tackler absolutely come up with air in the backfield. That could have gone for a loss, but Quatang, a spin move, able to make something out of nothing. Third and short. Call it third down and four. Ball just past midfield. Roswell doing exactly what they needed to do, coming out down 14 with the football to open the second half. Can't give it back to Walton right now. Here's Quatang. He tries to bounce it outside. A man around his ankles, and that will be as far as it goes. Blake Montz had him and would not let go. Maybe a gain of one. Excuse me, back to the original line of scrimmage. Mont's playing that rover type linebacker, Kevin. I think when you have great running backs and, and, and uh, fleet footed quarterbacks, you have guys that have assignments to do nothing more than uh, key in on certain players. And I believe the assignment for Mont's is to key in on Quatang. He did a good job that time. So that makes it fourth down and nine. Roswell going to have to give the football away. De Roberto with some time this time, and he hangs one up there. DJ Smith. A fair catch at the 20, and flags are going to come in late. Looks like the, his own player ran into him, didn't it? Flag down on the play. Looked like they were engaged in a block, and Smith got steamrolled after making the fair catch. By his own player. Let's see whether or not the player was blocked into Smith. Let's see if they sort this out. And they're going to pick up the flag, Chris. I think you called it a block into the receiver. And they will pick up that flag. They'll go first down and 10 from their own 21-yard line. Yeah, I believe the, uh, the uh, lineman, the line judge on the far side, all he saw was someone making contact with the man who caught the ball after calling a fair catch. And, Chris, just some clarification on the situation with the band from the first half. I went in and talked to some officials. You are not allowed to have your band playing during play on the field. 
And that was that warning that we experienced in the first half. Could definitely be a distraction. First down and 10 from the 21. The Walton Raiders with a 21 to seven lead behind their quarterback, Parker McLeod. Rowling and DJ Smith, the tailback. Smith gets the ball. Stiff arms a tackler and they are gonna fight and joust and force DJ Smith out of bounds after a loss of about five. Good job by Grant Bidell that time. That was a slow developing play. Chris and Roswell was right through the gaps and really snuffed that one out pretty quickly. So that will be a loss of five. Second down and 15. So the offense didn't get it done, but defense has the opportunity now to change field position and help the offense out if they can maintain this stand and force McLeod and company into a punt. Second down, 15. Now back at their own 16-yard line after the loss by Smith. They go back to Smith, right side. He dances through tacklers out to the 25 and moves the pile to the 28-yard line. And that will restore the, the down and distance to about third down and three. And Kevin, great vision by the junior DJ Smith. He was... He, you, you, you saw he was trying to go to the outside, but he saw just a little sliver of a hole inside, and he slid inside and just used his power and carried a couple of guys to a third down and short. They go to Smith another time, lowers his head, now tries to bowl forward. He's not going to make it. it. He didn't get to the 30. They need the 31. Three or four green jerseys in there. So Roswell's defense does its job, Chris. The Hornets' offense will get the football back. Yeah, Simon's in on the tackle that time for Roswell along with number 58, Craig Bowie. And good news there for the Hornets defense, Chris, is they get off the football field. They had really been worn down in that first half by Parker McLeod and that Raider offense. Fourth and a yard. And Coach Evan Goff going to go ahead and kick it away. Slade back deep for Roswell. Trent Wirtz on to punt. That's a good spiral that will turn over Machine. Back there at the 30-yard line, dancing and looking, flag down. And that looks like it may be a block, and that will probably hurt Roswell, Chris. They had a good chance at field position there, but Wirtz got a great punt off, and it looks like he may be aided now with additional problems. A penalty for Kevin, Roswell at the Kevin, worst I, possible time. I saw that block, and I'm not so sure I agree with it. You can, you, you, legally, you can block somebody you can block somebody face to face or even in the side. You just can't block them in, in the back. And I think that was a side block. I do not agree with that penalty, but uh, that's why I'm not in striped shirts. So Chris, instead of pretty decent field position, Wirtz puts a good punt on it and the illegal block. So back to the 26 yard line we go and Roswell all of a sudden doesn't get the big break they thought they would get on forcing the punt. Well, it's, it's almost exactly what happened at the beginning of the game except for four minutes later, you get another chance starting at the 26 instead of the 20-yard line. 7.59 to play third quarter. The Hornets trail 21 to seven, looking for some offense. Here's Monty rolling, looking for some room, in trouble. Now he's gonna have to run for his life. Get some help, his receiver keeps the play alive, it's Barton! Excellent. Down the near side, and he's tackled at the 26-yard line. And a late flag, looks like. Taquar Stewart saves the touchdown, but Chris, I think we may have 15 tacked on. A little extracurricular down there by Stewart, lost his composure. But what a nice job by Clark, I mean by Monty, to keep the play alive. Really elusive there in the backfield, and give, bit, give Barton credit. He broke at the right time, and a perfect strike to Barton, and a huge, huge gain. And, and as you mentioned, Kevin, more. 15 more. Dead ball personal foul is the call. Kevin Loss Austin. of composure by Taquar Stewart. So many times the momentum starts with the defense. The offense couldn't get the job done. They gave it back to Walton. Walton. Roswell's defense stiffened. Big third down stop that time for Walton. They get the ball back and all of a sudden inside the red zone knocking at the door. Chris, two seconds ago they were at their own 26-yard line. Now they're first and 10 at the 14. Monty looking to the outside. That's going to be incomplete. Too much air underneath it. McCauley, the intended receiver. And he is a shortish, smallish in stature individual. And that was just no chance. 
Second down and 10 from the 14-yard line. Chris, they've got to take advantage of the big play by Barton and the penalty. Kevin, I don't see Quatang in the ball game. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing him now over on the sidelines. I wonder, you know, a, a few weeks ago he did hurt one of his ankles. I wonder if he's still reeling from that injury. Monty spreads the offense. They go draw this time, and absolutely nothing happening there. Too, way too slow. Christian Burlock snuffs that one out. Machine Slade had nowhere to go, Chris. He was wrapped up immediately. So they're going backwards. Second down. We'll call it 13. Monty to throw, looking to the outside, and that's going to short hop. Looking for John Albert. Kevin, as quickly as momentum gets right on Roswell's side, it goes away. It looked like they lost their composure down there a little, Chris. They got a little, little frazzled. They tried to run hurry up and really kind of out hurried themselves. Well, they haven't really proven that they could control the ball and move the ball down the field. A couple of big plays, big play on that first touchdown, and big play here to get themselves in a position to possibly score a touchdown. The uh, offense stalls, and now they try to put three on the board. Here's Barton from 35. He missed from 32 earlier. This one's going to be short. Not enough leg and off to the right. So the 35-yarder is missed. That's the second one tonight by Barton. And, Chris, that is, you got to think, a squandered opportunity. And we've got a shaken up Raider. And Chris, you look around this crowd, everybody's a little stunned at what happened there. They were in business at the Raider 14-yard line. Three very quick and poorly executed plays and a missed field goal. Really squandered an opportunity there, which is everything they needed to climb back into this thing. And that's Blake Montz, a key piece of the uh, Roswell defense. And it looks like he's hopping with an apparent ankle injury. It's like a right ankle. He is going to make his way off the field, though, without help. Good for him. 7-10 to play in the third quarter. And Kevin, it's interesting. The team that shows the best or the most consistent ability to control the ball, you don't really necessarily have to score every time. You just got to be able to take the ball, move the ball down the field, win the line of scrimmage, and gain yardage. Keep the that's, opponent from scoring exactly, the ball. Exactly, and that's why Walton is winning this ball game because they are winning the game at the line of scrimmage and controlling the ball. McLeod going back to work now under center. Justice Bailey is the setback. First and 10 from the 20. Ball's on the ground. Bad exchange, and McLeod just falls on it. They'll lose one. And, Chris, that's a pretty similar situation to the bad snap that occurred with Monty. That's just like a kneel down. You give away a down there. And that's a break for Roswell. It'll be second down and 11. Still not out of this game. Plenty of time left. If their defense holds, you'd think that they'll get pretty good field position. They just need they need a play. They need a big play defensively. They've had a couple of big plays on offense. Their defense needs to step up and make a play. Haven't seen anything on special teams yet tonight. We've seen a couple of good bounces for the punters. But other than that, no real standouts on special teams yet. They go back to D.J. Smith on the draw. He looks like he tripped over his quarterback's foot. And he's going to lose a couple. So a couple of poor executed plays back to back. Kevin, I've seen a couple of players slip, and I believe for the first time this season, a cold air, which sometimes turns into a little bit of slipperiness. Bit of a, a greasy bit, pitch yeah, down there, of, my friend. A little, of, <laughs> little bit of dewiness, for lack of a better phrase, on the field. And um, that's something that the players have not had to deal with, as we have been uh, dealing with what you call here in the South and Indian summer. Getting to be that time of year here in Atlanta. Third down and 13. McLeod from the shotgun. He will throw this time. Looking for a screen to D.J. Smith. And Roswell snuffs that out. He may get back to the original line of scrimmage. Looked like the first man to meet him there was Grant Bidell. So the defense does their job, Kevin. So now, Chris, if they could just get in there, maybe put some pressure on Wurtz, force him to maybe shank one off the side of his foot or maybe get a hand on one. A special teams play would be great right now. Machine Slade drops back to his 45. Kevin, if you're Walton, you're fine with going back and forth kind of trading punts because you're up by 14. And there's 5.43 to play in the third quarter, Chris. So if you're Walton and you've held Roswell off the scoreboard in this third quarter, job half done. So Wurtz will step back to about his six-yard line. Mishan Slade at his 45. Roswell's got a, quite a few guys up on the line.
Another good nose-up spiral for Wurtz. Michan Slade calls for the fair catch at, the, at midfield, and he will corral that at the 49-yard line. So they'll go to work in Walton territory, Chris. So they did shift field position there. Defense does its job, gets off the field, and gives Ryan Monty another shot at it. Can't ask for anything more from the Hornet defense here early on in the uh, second half. They've stopped Walton a couple of times. Their offense needs to step up and do something. And, Chris, you got to think that the Walton Raiders offense, probably a little disappointed in themselves, the bad snap, then the bad draw, and then nothing on the outside. So uncharacteristic of them tonight, at least, to go three and out the way they did. Monty on a toss to the outside. Looks like it's going to be Slade. He breaks three. He's into the secondary. It's going to be a foot race to the end zone. Cuts back. Nice. Breaks the tackle by DJ Smith. And Mishan Slade goes in 49 yards. The sophomore. And, Kevin, we talked about how the, off, the defense did their job. The offense need to step up and make a play. And the irony involved in this, Kevin, two all-region, possibly all-state running backs, of course, Tyron Jones not in the game. Andrew Quatang virtually non-existent in this ball game. We're seeing most of this being done by a junior on the Walton side and a sophomore, Michane Slade, on the Roswell side. A much-needed touchdown for the Hornets. Big extra point for Barton right here. It's up, and it's good. So, Chris, just when we were starting to begin to shovel a little dirt onto Roswell, Mishan Slade goes 49 yards off right tackle, broke a great tackle on DJ Smith in the secondary, and then outraced everybody to the end zone. Big, big play, and the Hornets are right back in it. So again, another reason for the Walton Raiders offense to kind of kick themselves a little bit, Chris, on that poorly executed possession just a couple of moments ago. The tide has turned, and that's got a little murmur going in the crowd now, the senior night crowd back in this thing. Yeah, and it definitely is a ball game. <laughs> Kevin, you get, it's, it's frustrating on the defensive side if you feel like you're doing your job and then you give it back to the offense and they can't convert. And Walton defense is very formidable, but Roswell has the ability to move the football. I, I said the team that's going to win this ball game is going to be the one that's going to win the line of scrimmage, and Walton has been winning the line of scrimmage up until this point, and they're still winning the line of scrimmage. It's just that Roswell has benefited from a few big plays. Two big plays – have been the difference in all 14 of their points on the board. And Chris, now we can start to talk about those two missed field goals by Bennett Barton. A 32-yarder and a 35-yarder, both missed opportunities to get on the scoreboard for Roswell, and that changes the complexion of this thing and also may change your confidence as, you're, as the head coach in what you're going to do if this thing gets close a little later on. So things start to take a little more interesting shape here at the Hornets' Nest as Roswell tries to climb back in this thing on the shoulders of Mishan Slade, 49 yards off tackle. And that got the crowd back into it. An exciting run, breaking tackle, showing strength and speed, and a nose for the end zone. And that has got the Hornets right back in it. Bennett Barton set to kick it off. And he will kick a little line drive squirter. That'll be fielded by D.J. Smith at the two. Smith with his head up, driving forward to the 30. Flags come in late from the far sideline. Now I'm not sure what this. I'm not sure what this penalty is because I am not quite sure how the official on the complete other side of the field could see some sort of infraction. But it's going to be a block in the back and erase the big return by Smith. So both teams with some costly penalties. Chris, we talked about how well these guys had played the first half, and now we've seen a couple of costly ones to really hurt field position for both sides. So it'll be first and 10 from the 20 instead of the 30. So Kevin, momentum definitely on the side of the Hornets, but as I mentioned, Walton pretty much throughout the entire ball game has been able to con control the line of scrimmage and move the football so let's see what happens here. They may want to go into a little situation where they don't do anything fancy, maybe three, four, or five yards up the field, get a couple of first downs and get a little green behind them. McLeod back in with Rowling behind him. Smith in motion. Smith gets the carry left side. He runs into a pile of tacklers, and he's wrapped up and thrown back again. Grant Bidell, the second big play in a couple of minutes by Bidell. Another play that was very, very slow to develop. And when you've got a veteran linebacker out there like Grant Bidell, he is not going to let that slow play turn into positive yardage for Walton. Great, great read 
by Roswell. Shades of City Park in Gainesville last week, partner. Dare I say it? You did. I did. I said it. Big down and distance here. Call it second down and 20. For Parker McLeod and the Walton Raider offense, they've come out flat here in the second half. McLeod to throw. Intercepted at the 20. We got a tie ball game. Pick six. It's in. Grant Bidell comes through again. Senior stepping up and making two consecutive great plays. And with a PAT, we start all over again, Kevin. Grant Bidell has absolutely put this defense on his shoulders and taken over this ball game. Two big tackles on DJ Smith for losses, and now a pick six from 20 out. And we are a kick away from being tied. Adjustments. We talk about adjustments at halftime. The teams that make adjustments, you feel like they have a good chance of, of winning the ball game or staying in the ball game. And obviously, Roswell's defense made a plea, made a commitment. We are going to keep our team in this ball game. And if we have to, we'll put some points on the board ourselves. And uh, Grant Bidell said, you know what? Let me see if I can do a couple of uh, good things, and we'll see. Very, very important PAT. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Barton drives it through, and with 4.20 to play in the third quarter, Roswell has come all the way back from 21-7, and we are tied at the Hornets Nest, 21 all. Very opportunistic Roswell. I talked about not, not being able to be in a ball control game for Roswell, but I also mentioned about big plays. Three big plays for Roswell have turned into 21 points. The big pass at the uh, onslaught of the uh, ball game early on. The big run by the sophomore that got the, the uh, game within seven points. And then the senior leadership, Grant Bidell, stepping up with a huge interception and the touchdown. And Chris, I said that they'd come out flat. They are absolutely off the rim right now as far as their offensive execution goes. So a late flag for excessive celebration, Chris, and that will drive them back on the kickoff. Not my favorite call in football. I mean, with all the emotion, everything on the line, Roswell trying to put a positive stamp on their season. A little execution comes through for them on the defense. They get a pick six, and they celebrate. A little too much for the referee's liking. Maybe a tad bit too much control for the officials on that particular call. Kicking off for number two, Ben Barton. Kevin, sounds like the 12th man over here. The, the green wave, so to speak, for Roswell is definitely awoken. You said the murmur the, the previous time is now turned into some... Uh, some jovious cheers over here on the uh, green side. He's definitely brought this crowd back into the football game on senior night. And a lot of anxious faces over there on the Walton Raiders side of the field. Barton's kick is a big one. Not going to happen. And that is not going to have a prayer of being returned. Barton's kick was into the end zone for a touchback. Following being placed at the 20-yard line. So here we go. We start all over again. They didn't climb as big a mountain as Loganville climbed last week, Chris, but they didn't have to. They got to the top anyway. We're tied at 21, 420 to play in the third quarter. Now the question is, can the Walton Raiders offense right the ship, stop the bleeding, insert your cliche here. They are really in trouble offensively. Parker McLeod and crew have got to find a way to at least get some positive yardage. They've been going backwards on offense this entire second half. They're going to try it with D.J. Smith up the middle. He's going to have six, seven yards. Hard fought out to the 27-yard line. And for me, Kevin, it's simple. That's what you do. Between the tackles, use your big offensive line and move the ball down the field. A, a good pickup on first down. They've got to get back to what worked for them for, to the tune of 21 points in the first half, and it's exactly that, partner. On the ground, D.J. Smith between the tackles on the edges. We've got ourselves a whole new complexion to this one at the Hornet's Nest. They go stretch play this time with Smith. He'll have the first down across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Little bites at a time, a couple of five, six yards per carry is going to be just what the doctor ordered to settle down that Raiders offensive huddle. 
That will move the chains from the 31. It'll be first and 10. Don't forget, you can also throw <laughs> Justice Bailey in there as well. But right now, Smith is a featured back. They're going to have an official's whistle. Looks, looks like the chain gang was a little slow catching up with the play. Now we're set to go. Parker McLeod and company trying to settle down. They've been stunned in this third quarter to the tune of 14 to nothing. And the 21 to 7 lead has all but evaporated. Henry Rowling gets his first carry of the game. He'll have three very hard fought yards, maybe four out to the 35 yard line. Been tasked with basically blocking for, blocking for Parker McLeod here in this ball game. Clock continues to run down to three minutes to play in the third quarter. Second down and six for the Raiders. Ball's on the ground. Bad snap to Parker McLeod. Roswell, got Roswell it. says they have it. At the 31-yard line, the Hornets have the football. Walton totally falling apart here in this third quarter. Parker McLeod is visibly rattled back there, Chris. I think that interception is still in his head. And Walton just cannot get anything accomplished here in the third quarter. I think some of these teams are going to stop inviting us to call their football games there, Chris. Slade in the backfield. Quatang continues to sit on the bench. So Andrew Quatang continues on the bench here in the second half. Michan Slade behind Ryan Monty. Roswell at the 31. We're tied at 21. Monty in big trouble. He's going to go down. Did not get rid of the football. And he's going to be dropped back at the 45-yard line. Chris, like that's a loss of about 13. Looks like Zach Williams in on the tackle that time. Got to get rid of that football. Got to have that clock ticking in your head and just throw that thing away. Big play for the Walton defense right now. And Very big. Wal Walton's defense needed something. Their defense has been struggling. Their offense has been struggling. They needed something positive. And we'll see what happens. Loss of 14, so it's going to be second down, 24. Hornets in trouble here, heading the wrong direction. And we're going to have whistles and flags before the snap. Maybe a legal formation, possibly. This is going to go against Roswell, so a lack of concentration over on that side. False start. So with all that momentum, Chris, they have popped their own balloon, if you will. And it's amazing. In two plays... Two plays, a sack, a sack and a penalty, and it's... That's 20 yards they've lost. Second to bus ride. The nose of the football just back on the Roswell side of the field. Disaster for the Roswell offense here following the fumble recovery. They're going to air it out this time looking for Barton. He's got it at the 20. Great pass. And he's going in. Bennett Barton. And the Hornets have taken the lead. You know, Takar Stewart on the previous drive, he limped off the field as if he was hurting. Stewart could not stay with Bennett Barton that time. The ball was put up beautifully. Barton ran under the ball and completely passed Takar Stewart. And Kevin, what a turn of events we have had here in about, oh, 10 minutes and some change. So, Chris, Bennett Barton has had quite a senior night tonight, an 85-yard touchdown reception, a 50-yard touchdown reception. He's missed two field goals, and he has now just put the Roswell Hornets up 28-21. to 21 unanswered points in the third quarter. And now the pressure is on Walton. Isn't that something how the second half has turned this game on its head? So can the Raiders answer? Can they shake off the cobwebs? Can they right all the wrongs here in the third quarter? There's a lot of football left in this ball game, but Walton is reeling. They need something good to happen. And, Chris, this will be the last time I bring up Loganville Gainesville. Sure it will. But do you think that Walton came in here looking past 
this Roswell team, knowing that they're heading into the playoffs. They're ready to go. Roswell is a mere 2-7. and seven. We'll go in there, we'll take care of business, and we'll get out of here. Same scenarios. We're looking at identical scenarios, and eerily, we're looking at identical results so far. Well, Walton, regardless of what happens in this game tonight, will go in as a number two seed coming out of Region 5, 6A. I don't think they were overlooking Roswell. I just don't think Roswell was going to go away without a fight. Still 12, 12 minutes plus in this ball game, plenty of time. Walton's just sluggish right now. Kevin. And you think about the emotional damage this will do, even to a team going into the playoffs like Gainesville, like Walton here tonight, unless they can right the ship, they're going to suffer the same fate and have to carry that baggage into the playoffs. Barton, another line drive that will skip off this very slick surface and go right to DJ Smith at the two. He's got room at the 25. Couple of men to beat, shakes a tackle at midfield. He will be dragged down at the Roswell 48-yard line, Chris, and no flags this time to ruin the good field position. Maybe that's exactly what Walton needed. You know, it's kind of punch, it may be punch, counter punch for the rest of the game. Walton came out and took control early. Roswell came back with a vengeance, 21 straight points. Walton really needs to take this and do something with it. They start out in Roswell territory. Well, the last two possessions have been self-inflicted wounds. The fumble by McLeod turned into a touchdown, or excuse me, turned into a serious situation where Bidell intercepted on the long down and distance. And then the big play, giving yep. up that huge, huge catch to Bennett Barton. We've seen McLeod. He's extremely, extremely frustrated. He's got to shake it off. He's a leader out there. He's a senior. He's the one that kind of controls everything. Let's see what Walton has. They're going to go to DJ Smith, their safety valve. He cuts it up inside, and he'll drag tacklers to the 44-yard line before he's brought down after a gain of four. Looks like Grant Bidell among others, and on the tackle. Minute 18 and counting here in the third quarter. The Roswell Hornets have come storming back. They trailed at halftime 21-7. to They now lead 28-21. to Second down and seven. Parker McLeod trying to settle down this offense and himself as well. A couple of bad plays by the quarterback. Put his team in a hole here tonight. They go stretch play this time to DJ Smith. He tucks it nice and drives forward. He'll have a Raider first down at the 35-yard line. Went back to Raider football that time. Flooding the left side. Pulling guard from right to left. Laying the initial block. Fullback getting the linebacker trying to fill the gap. And Smith doing the rest. Momentarily stop the clock to move the chains. Now they'll wind it with 42 to play in the third. McLeod seems to have settled them down. A pretty nice drive after a great kickoff return by D.J. Smith. This time they go draw to D.J. And that great. has not worked all night long. That play has been blown up every time they've called it, Chris. Nothing happening there. First man in was Devontae Hill. And they may or may not get one more in. We're down to 10 seconds to play in the third. And I don't think McLeod's in any hurry to run this one. They're going to go ahead and let the quarter expire. So we'll go to the break with a turn of events that no one expected. Roswell 28 and Walton 21. Remember, football fans, PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports lives here. We'll be back with fourth quarter action from the Hornets Nest with your score Roswell 28 and Walton 21. We'll be right back. And we are back at the Hornet's Nest in Roswell.
PlayOnSports.com's Friday night game of the week, and we have got ourselves a barn burner. Kevin Beck with Chris King. It's Roswell 28, Walton 21. It was 21-7 the other way at halftime. And partner, here we go. Walton trying to right the ship and climb back in this one. Parker McLeod and company looking for the equalizer here. First play of the fourth quarter. McLeod to throw this time, and that's on the target at the 34-yard line. Pretty nice good, pickup of grab. about six. Yeah, Ryan Craig that time. And that pass was just short of too late, Chris. Defender was closing, but a nice job by McLeod to deliver the strike, and that will get them back to third down and about eight. And Walton did a good job of taking what they um, were given and getting this to a third and manageable down. Big play here for the Roswell defense. Crowd starting to endure and implore them on. They've got to endure 12 more minutes of this. Empty backfield for Parker McLeod. He fires near side, and he's got a man at the 28-yard line. Gibson. Stone Romberg at the 25. And that's going to be very, very close. And we've got a flag down back at the 33, Chris. I think that was Maurice Gibson that made that, that catch for what looks like a first down. But there is a laundry on the field. Unsportsmanlike against Roswell. That's it. Exactly what you do not need. So now there's no question they're going to get the first down. They're going to give Walton a few more yards. And uh, when the smoke clears, Walton will be in the red zone. Somebody out there was just running their mouth. And the officials have already, you know, whether you like the officials or the, the way they've been calling this game tight or not, they've proven that they're not going to put up with any nonsense. They've shown it. They've called penalties on both teams. And at this point, you've got to just zip it, play football, and have a little bit of composure. They've established how they want this game to be played on both sides. They've been fair about the calls. Good point, Chris. So now it is first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. And we're going to have flags and whistles before the snap. <coughs> Officials Made. sorting it out at the 12. Formation infraction possible. So give back five, false start. Another procedure call. So that marches them outside the 15 to the 17 yard line. Gifting and re-gifting out there, Chris. 15 one way, five back the other. So first and 15 from this 18 yard line. They can get a first down inside the three. Tikar Raiders trail by seven. Sophomore Takar Stewart in the ball game. The Roswell Hornets with all the momentum here in the second half have come storming back with 21 unanswered points. It's going to be D.J. Smith up the middle, and he is going to sprint speed. his way down toward the goal line, and he's going to be inside the one, Chris. That'll be a first down and a late flag, and, I think this, is and this is going to go Walton. against Walton. After the play, one of the guys in green went flying halfway through the end zone. And, Chris, instead of first and goal from about a foot away, it's going to be first and goal from about the 15-yard line. Eric Fox for Roswell comes limping off the field. And Kevin, this is a big penalty for Walton. They, it's post-possession, so it will be first down, and it will be first and goal, but it will be first and goal from the 16-yard line. Absolute nightmarish mistake on a fantastic effort by D.J. Smith. And that takes a little wind out of that offensive huddle too, Chris. You've got to keep your composure. You're not going to get many gifts like first and goal from a foot away. And they just won't work when you shoot yourself in the foot like that. Justice Bailey in the ballgame. Rowling this time on the carry. Actually, that's right. There's Rowling. And the ball squirts out, but they're going to say forward progress had been reached. Get a little chippy out there, partner. You can see a little talk after the, after the whistle's down there. Gain of about a yard. It'll be second and goal from the 15. So, Chris, we're wrong about the down and distance. It looks like they're going to be able to get a first down at the six. Well, you know, Jason just 
whispered in my ear, he said, shouldn't it be first and goal, but started from the 16-yard line. And I thought it I was thought it post was possession, which brought me a ball back, but it still should be first and goal. So according to the yard markers now, they can get a first down. DJ Smith tries the left side, and he's brought down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. And it's all going to be academic here, partner, if they don't start to do something with that football. So according to the yard markers now, it's third down and nine. So the, penalty, the, the initial play was to the one-yard line. After the play, the flag went. Unsportsmanlike, whatever you want to call it, personal foul. Marching back 15, but it was after the play. Right. So I'm like you. I thought it would have been first Seemed logical. Big play here for the Raider offense. Third and nine. They go play action with McLeod. Fires near side to DJ Smith. He cuts it back inside. And he's going to go down at the 16. Maybe lose a yard. Was that Devontae Hill again? I think it was. Sure was. Devontae Hill, the junior. So Walton has no one to blame but themselves for this situation. It's going to bring on Price for a field goal attempt. Neither team having Mason, make it Mason in. Neither team having the best of luck tonight with their kickers. 34-yard attempt to cut into the lead. The kick is up, and the kick is good. A 34-yarder knocked through by Andrew Mason. So it's 28-24, still a touchdown away from the lead. And, Chris, that was self-inflicted pain right there by that Walton offense. A golden opportunity for Walton. First and goal. Somebody got a little heated, and it cost him not only 15 yards, but it cost him potentially a touchdown and a potential situation where they could have tied the game. And now you're giving the ball back to Roswell's offense, who, oh, by the way, has scored 21 points in the second half. And a lot of momentum, and they've got the crowd behind them. 8-16 to play in the contest. And Roswell, for the first time, Kevin, they will have the ball with no pressure. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say no pressure because you always have to play solid football, but they have the ball now. So they can go into ball possession and um, ball control mode if they so choose to do so. Got to come out with at least a field goal, Chris, here, and keep it at a touchdown. A touchdown beats you here if you're Roswell. They've got to find a way. As you said, 8-16 to play. They need to take a big chunk out of that clock and come off with some points. Albert and Slade are back deep to receive for Roswell. Mishan Slade coming off a 49-yard touchdown run. Last time he touched the football. Kind of a nervous hush falls over the hornet's nest here, partner. Very quiet, considering the circumstances. This will be Albert from the one. He's going to try near side. Gets to the corner, loses his footing, and he'll stumble forward to the 23. And I, and I do think that the, uh, the temperature is playing a factor on that field out there. Very slick out there. I think it's turf, actually. Great night for football here in North Atlanta. Pretty chilly, though, partner. A lot of hoods out, a lot of gloves out tonight. And here come the Roswell Hornets with a lot of momentum here in this second half. A lot of heads hanging when they went to that halftime locker room, but they came out on fire and have snatched the lead away from the Walton Raiders. Not much happening on the right side. That's Slade for maybe one. Kevin, this well, back to the original line of scrimmage, they're going to say he did not gain anything there. This is where you really, really want your bull in there, Quatang. Love to know what his uh, status is. Obviously, he is. There, there's no. There's Chris, no I see him rush. on crutches down directly in front of us, so it looks like his day is obviously over. So tough break there. Didn't get a report, but I did just spot him amongst his teammates on crutches on the near sideline. Probably re-aggravated that ankle you documented. Now it's going to be up to Slade, and he's going backwards. Loss of three. So now the Walton Raiders defense is fired up. And you can feel the pendulum of momentum starting to swing back just a bit. Yeah, Dre, yeah. Dreon Williams on the tackle that time, along with Justice Bailey. We're going to call it third down and 14. Clock continues to run down towards seven minutes, 7.10 to play in the fourth quarter. Pass the ball. 
Jason Barrett has checked in. In the H-back position, it's Monty to throw. Quick throw over the middle. John Albert, and they're going to say incomplete. Hit as he caught it. And that will bring up a fourth down and 14. So just like that, here comes a punt. Walton's defense did a really good job of keeping the football in front of them. Definitely didn't want to make, didn't want to have the ball go down the field. And they should get pretty good field position. And, and Chris Walton is going with two receivers back. You're going to have DJ Smith back there with Taquar Stewart. So they want to return this football. See if DiRoberto can put a foot into this one. Oh, he shanks Shanked that one it. off his ankle, Chris. That is the worst time to have some, and it takes a bad bounce. That is going to be a net of about 14 yards on the punt. So just when they needed their talented punter to get his foot into one, it all goes wrong. And that definitely has got a murmur going through the crowd. Two very, very short words, but they mean so much. Ebb and flow. It's amazing what has happened. I mean, we've seen the pendulum swing in both directions, and Walton's still got to put the ball in the end zone. A field goal does nothing for them. And Chris, Roswell's been behind for so much of this game, it's almost like they're playing like they are behind. Here's McLeod, stretch play to Smith. He's got the corner. Plenty of room outside. And he is on a mission down to the 20-yard line. And Chris, he is so fast to the edge, he beats the defenders to the corner and just puts his foot in the ground. And he's got 10 yards before you can blink. And all of a sudden, the Raiders are in the red zone or just knocking on the door. First and 10 at the 20. 6.30 to play in the contest. Walton trailed by four. Kevin, I think the Raiders realized the opportunity that they lost in the previous possession. So we'll see if they uh, really, really are very aggressive in trying to get this ball down to the end zone quickly. Quick give to DJ Smith. He puts his head down on the right side. And he'll have three, maybe four. I'm going to say progress to about the 27-yard line. Chris Bryant comes into the game for Roswell on the defensive line. Call it second down and a long seven. Clock goes under six to play. The field goal does not help Walton here. They need four. McLeod goes shotgun. Rongberg is uh, lined up to the near side. Single coverage. Motion with Smith. They fake the give. McLeod fires at the 12. And that's broken up. Great job on the defensive coverage. Looked like Isaiah Garris. And they, were going, they were going for Rongberg. And as you said, Kevin, excellent timing and a great defensive play. Third down and still that long seven. Very big play here. Looks like Ryan Craig brought the play in for, for Walton. He's been the target tonight for McLeod. And we're going to have whistles. Looks like a false start on the right side of the offensive line. Looks like somebody kind of flinched, and that's going to cost Walton five. Crucial, crucial penalties. We saw that right side tight end, Chris. He flinched, kind of stood up out of his stance. And that will hurt. Again, self-inflicted problems for Walton. And, Kevin, there's a big difference between third and eight and third and 13. Especially with 5.31 to play in the ball game, and you trail by four. A field goal does nothing but draw them close. They need a touchdown to take the lead. Ryan Craig's in the ball game. Near side, far side, Stone Romberg. Three wideouts near side for McLeod on third and 13. Game hanging in the balance. McLeod fires. He's got DJ Smith at the 12. That's going to be short of a first down and bring up a fourth and a couple. Everyone looking to the sideline to see what Evan Goff wants to do. Chris, I haven't seen special teams crew run on the field yet. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down and three from the 13. Not a bad call. Not a bad call. 5-0-4, five, oh, five minutes to play, Chris. Clock is moving. Watch Roswell. Last thing you want to do is jump. 
And Walton to the line very quickly. McLeod goes with a quick snap to DJ Smith. Not happening. I don't think he made it, Chris. Roswell was there to meet him. Whatever green jerseys on the bottom, bottom of that pile made the tackle, and I think his name's Grant Bidell, Kevin. It sure is, Chris. Number four gets up off the pile. There is your MVP if you're a Roswell fan right now. So Evan Goff rolls the dice in the red zone, comes up snake eyes, and the Hornets will go back to work. They've got a four-point lead, 4.44 to play in the fourth. Still a lot of time in the ball game. Both teams have their full allotment of timeouts. Ken, now, Ro Ken, Roswell, Ken Roswell take a little bit of time off this clock, put a little green behind them because they're in dangerous territory right now. Right now, first downs are the Hornets' best friend. They've got to move the chains. It falls upon the Walton defense another time to try to stop Monty and company. Raiders show blitz. They go quickly to the outside looking for Bennett Barton. Nice downfield blocking. He's got some room. That's going to be very close to a first down. And that should be good enough to move the chains. Great call. Yeah, John Alford doing, doing a really, really good job of blocking as a – most good receivers do. You want them to be able to catch the football, but you also want them to be able to block downfield to help their other receivers. And that was a really big play by Roswell. Ryan Monty staying composed in there, calling the signals. Hornets trying to snatch one away here at the nest. Going to give that to Slade. Little man, nothing happening there. He might lose one. Keeps the clock running, though, Chris. Second down and 10. Number 26, Harrison Campbell. Correction, number 26. John Albert brings the play in for Coach Justin Sanderson. Four oh three to play in the contest. Under four. Clock is ticking. Second down and ten. Monty to throw. Fires far side. Got a man breaking a tackle. Looks like Barton. No, it's Albert. Albert came in with the play, and he gets the call. Clock continues to run. 340 and ticking. That'll bring up a very short third down. Billings with the tackle that time for Walton, but it was Tequan Robinson, Kevin, the one who, who missed the initial tackle, which could have possibly put Roswell in more of a third down, four or five situation as opposed to third and short. Albert checks out. McCauley checks in. Bennett Barton to the near side, one-on-one -on -one with D.J. Smith, a couple of stars in this game. That's going to be a Monty carry, quick give, quarterback keeper, and Monty moves the chains. Right off the left hip of his center. Both teams with their full complement of timeouts, Chris. 3.08 to play. The clock will begin as soon as they move the chains. A fresh set of downs for the Hornets. And they have just taken control of this football game in the second half. But the Raiders have also helped them out immensely with some critical, critical penalties at the worst possible times to shoot themselves in the foot. Sometime soon, Walton's going to have to start thinking about calling timeouts to preserve a little clock. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. They go to Slade. He's got room off the left side. Bounces it again. That could be another Roswell first down. He's bounced out of bounds at the 46. Tackle made by number 21, D.J. Smith. Chris looks like he's going to be about a yard short of a first down at the 45. He did go out of bounds. That will stop the clock. 2.40 to play. Nice down and distance here for Monty. Second and very short. They're going to keep it on the ground with Slade. He tries to bounce it outside. Bounces it again. More reaches tackles. And missed tackles. And great second and third effort by Slade. Will have a Roswell first down. Two and a half minutes to play in the contest. And that will move the chains for the Hornets. So Chris doing exactly what they need to do. Looks like the chain game is going to measure. From here it looks like it's not even close. It sure does, Chris. Looks like they've got it by better than a half a yard. 
And that may have been Evan Goff asking for a measurement, Chris. It is within the coach's prerogative to ask for a measurement. But what that does. That's a that's, free timeout, essentially. Exactly. It's a free timeout. It, gets, it gives him a chance to come over and get his defense to regroup and say, hey, look, this is what we're faced with. First down, two and a half to go. We got three timeouts, and, and Walton's going to have to be very, very particular and very, very smart about how they manage this next two minutes and 31 seconds and three timeouts if they want to get the ball back with a chance to win the ball game. The Roswell Hornets trailed 21 to seven at halftime and have come out like a house on fire to take the lead, 28 to 24. They've got the football, a first down, 2.30 to play. The only good news for the Raiders is they have three timeouts, but so far no answers on this possession. Hold for Ryan football. Monty and company. You want to hold that football if you're Roswell. Keeping it on the ground with Slade. Bounces off tacklers. Flag in the backfield. And that looks like a hold, Chris. That's going to hurt this possession. That flag came in from the near sideline. If that's against Roswell, Kevin, that should stop the clock. That will be the hold in the backfield. And, Chris, you call it every week. It was behind the play. No need to reach out and grab that guy when the ball carrier is gone, and that could be a break for Walton. Especially if you're Roswell's offense that you don't necessarily need to gain yards more than you need the clock to run. I mean, if you end up with a one-yard gain, that's okay. You're in a good position. You've got the lead. Not very much time left on the clock. And now, first down and quite a long way. Chris, it looked like that penalty was marked off as 15 instead of 10. Yeah, there's all kind of uh, everything going wrong down there, Chris. It looked like it was holding the, yeah, the signal, but they marked it 15 yards back. It looked wrong. The, the referee just kept marching. Unless it's and now they're going to talk it over. Unless that wasn't a holding. From spot foul, maybe, possible. It's very possible. And that's going to be a dead ball foul. Back against Roswell, against Roswell, false start. Yeah. So it is all going wrong for the Hornets here. And Chris, these guys are going to need permission slips to take this trip for a first down. The only good thing about what's going on for Roswell is the clock is continuing, continuing to run. And how much time is Walton going to let run off the clock before they start using their timeouts? And it looks like that's exactly what has happened, Chris. You called it. Chris, it had to be a spot foul. They must have called that foul from the point of the infraction. <laughs> like a comedian in the crowd yeah, here in front of us, Chris, just said replacement. Roswell referee. faithful, not too uh, <laughs> thrilled about what's going on in Very the striped Very funny, shirts. young lady. Okay, so the opportunity to talk it over. So it looks like it was a spot foul, Chris. So they're going to call it first down and 25. Well, the good it's thing almost about 27, really. Well, the, the good thing for Roswell is it's still first down. I mean, regardless of what's been happening here, they've been marching backwards, but it's still first down. And during all of this melee of officiating, officiating. Qu questionability, you know, <laughs> What's still, happening is they're taking time off the clock. 150 to play in the ball game. And they still have four downs to, to run if they, show, if they so choose. And uh, Walton had to use one of their timeouts. So with a minute 50 to play, Roswell has got a ton of yardage to make up. First and 25. They elect to keep it on the ground. They go with Slade. He rips some tacklers down to the 39-yard line. Gets a big chunk of it back. The clock continues to run now, under 140, flags down. And I'll tell you what happened. I don't know who's going to get the call, but there was, there was some, uh, some swinging, swinging going on. The initial swinging was done by Green, and the, the um, reciprocation was done by White. So we'll see 
Got very chippy saw. down there. You say DJ Smith down there, hands on hips. He's probably asking himself, what do I have to do tonight? I've played defense. I've played offense. I've scored touchdowns. I've returned punts and kicks. And we're still down by four. About to get the call from the official. The club, Personal foul. foul. And, they, they're gonna, and an ejection. And an ejection. What? So they saw the retaliation, I guess you could say. And that's going to be an automatic first down, Chris. And that's, uh, I believe that was Christian Burlock. And he is ejected from the contest. And once again, once the ball is set, the clock will start. Now, should be an automatic first down. After what we've seen here tonight, I'm not going to go ahead and assume anything. So a lot of high drama here at the end of this one. It started to get chippy around the end of the first half. 18 yards. <laughs> so we'll see how they sort this out. And Coach Sanderson down there, he's trying to help him out with what the yardage should be. Interesting situation here with these officials, Chris. They've found themselves right in the middle of this thing. And the explanation to the far side, and looks like Evan Goff wanted an explanation from the head referee. Now they definitely have control of this ball game. So here we go back the other way. The official, the ball carrier, right up the middle. Into Walton territory. So Chris, not an automatic first down. The yard marker says first down. And now they will move the chains. They should move the chains. The now gonna, it says no, they're going to say second down. Okay. First per personal foul I've seen in a while that didn't result in a first down. Well, we're having a heck of a first night here, partner. Second down and a couple. After the ejection. All right, let's reset it after all that drama. 28-24, Roswell, 141 to play. And the clock's getting ready to start. And the clock again. is about to be wound. And now Ryan Monty, Monty hands on hips, looking over to the sideline. And, and now of the course clock they will stop. And Walton will take a timeout. So it's been about five minutes since we actually had the football snapped into play. Hey, what a fan. And the, uh, the, the scoreboard still shows Walton with three timeouts left. It's a good thing they've got us here, partner. So we've had everything in this one, Chris. We've had an epic comeback by the underdog home team. We've had an ejection. We've had some questionable calls by the referees. An ejection. And it, will this be... The band has been warned. Yeah, Walton's band never made it. Walton's, Walton's band, band didn't never made show. It. So senior night has really turned into the twilight zone here for the Walton Raiders. And we will eventually have the football snapped and get back to a football game here at Roswell High School. Second down and three for the Hornets. 136 to play in the contest. A first down here pretty much seals the deal. And a distracted crowd finally gets back into this one. Monty, the give, up the middle to Slade. He's got the first down. The sophomore running hard, Kevin. Running real hard. One of the biggest carries of his 2012 season, Chris. A big first down. And that will just about do it. One minute, 30 seconds to play in the contest, and the clock begins to tick. One timeout remaining for Walton, we think. Careful about your speculation there, buddy. And Monty taking all the time he can. By the time he snaps this football, it'll be about a minute to play in the ball game. First and ten. And a dead ball foul, delay of game. So Monty took it all that time. We're down to a minute two. Official call is a delay of game against the Hornets. They 
First down and 15 from the 46. In the longest fourth quarter. This has been an excruciating wait for a celebration for these Roswell fans. An hour short. They're on the brink of erupting here, but nobody's sure that that's actually going to happen. The anticipation is killing the home fans. And we're set to go with Monty under center another time. Slade just puts two hands on the football, and he's going to lose a couple, and that will be Evan Goff's final timeout with 56 seconds to play. Walton is now out of timeout. So, partner, it's not over yet. Of course it's not. But it's as close as it's been for the Roswell Hornets so far. You know, you, you tip your hat to the Roswell Hornets because if they had not rallied the troops there in the third quarter, this would all be for naught. They did a great job. Their defense came out with a game plan. They wanted to do everything they could to stop Walton. Offense came out and scored quickly. And through the trials and tribulations of an extremely long fourth quarter, Roswell should come out with a victory on senior night. And the band is waiting off on the track to celebrate with the crowd here on senior night. I think the horn players have been warming up for a while. So to be second down, we'll call it 18. And this game has ground to a halt. Walton has done everything they can to stop the clock and slow the momentum of Roswell, but nothing doing. Monty just going to keep it, slide off tackle. And Walton is unable to stop the clock. Third down and 18 coming up. 47, 46, 45. Now Monty's going to come right over and talk to Sanderson. What a great comeback. Two consecutive weeks we've seen great comebacks. Absolutely great efforts by teams that a lot of folks would just go ahead right off their seasons, Chris. But you've got to really, really tip your hat to these guys in green. And you'll, it'll, it'll, you'll be amazing to see what, see what that type of win will do to the psyche of the kids that are coming back next year. And that will finally, mercifully do it. The Roswell Hornets have come back and defeated the Walton Raiders by the final score of 28 to 24 here at Roswell High School. An awful lot to talk about in the post game. And we will definitely do that in just a moment. I want to remind everybody that Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter. you got to check out Facebook and Twitter after this one for all the news and information and links to the great highlights from this contest. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Your final score from Roswell High School, the Hornets 28. The Raiders 24 will be back with the post game in just a moment.
Correct. And we are back to a, well, a stunned and jubilated hornet's nest all at the same time where we have seen the Roswell Hornets come back from a 21-7 halftime deficit and defeat the heavily favored number three Walton Raiders by the final score of 28 to 24. Kevin Beck with Chris King, Jason, and Kenny. Well, guys, what do you think about this one? It absolutely had everything we thought it would have. After last week, we saw Loganville come back and do this to Gainesville from 41-20 down. We speculated that we might see more of the same. They come out, did everything they had to do, got some good breaks, got some great performances on offense and defense, and also got a lot of help, unfortunately, from the Raiders, who basically imploded in the second half. Chris, 21-7, it's all started with Mishan Slade on the big run to come out 49 yards when it looked like Roswell was backed up against the chains. Well, I think we can even go back as far as the coin toss to start the game. I love putting my defense on the field. I've said it a hundred times. I love putting my defense on the field at the beginning and getting the ball at the beginning of the second half. It does two things. It allows you to pad your lead if you're winning, and it allows you the opportunity to put points on the board and get back into the game if you're down. And that's exactly what happened with Roswell. They didn't panic. They were down 21-7 to at halftime, but they went in and, and drew up a, a flawless, almost flawless game plan for in the uh, to, for the second half and for the most part for the third quarter they put a quick seven on the board defense stood and then I believe both defenses kind of went back and forth for a little bit well, let's Kevin, talk about mistaken. that scoring recap Chris it started with Walton the 34 yard pass play to Ryan Craig quickly I mean inside of a couple of minutes Walton was on top then against the chains again with their backs against the wall the 85 yard touchdown catch and run by Bennett Barton. Then it looked like, as you said, Walton was ready to take over the football game. A one-yard TD run by D.J. Smith. Barton missed a 32-yard field goal. Here comes Walton once again, a three-yard TD run by Bailey. Barton misses a 35-yard field goal. But then in the second half, here comes Mishan Slade on third and long, 49 yards. He's in. And then that is when Grant Bidell took over. A couple of big tackles for sacks to put... Walton against the chains, and then that 20-yard pick six to really get Roswell back in it. And then another big play by Bennett Barton, 50-yard TD catch and run, put them on top. Walton tried to scratch and claw back in it. The 34-yard field goal by Mason wasn't enough, made it 28-24, and that's when Roswell held on, and Walton basically, Chris, shot themselves in the foot a couple of times with mistakes, and Roswell saw the game off. The team that came out with the game plan and made the least amount of mistakes in the second half ended up winning the football game. Kevin, here's a question I'm going to throw at you. You know, we always give a player of the game. I'm going, to, I'm going to throw three names out there, and you can pick one, two, or three. Barton, Bidell, Slade. Go for it. Based on the stats I just read off to you, that is probably one of the toughest decisions that you and I have had to you, make. You could just say yes. I was about to say just break out three trophies and give it to all of them because each one of them, had a huge impact in the game. Barton, with that 85-yard touchdown catch and run, really got the belief back in this crowd because Walton walked right down the field and ran it right in, and we thought that everybody in the green was going to be in trouble. He missed a couple of field goals, so he rode the emotional roller coaster just like anybody here tonight. And then you get Slade, again, backs against the wall, third and long, off goes Slade, 49 yards, in for the injured Quatang. So not only does he, have, does he have that pressure that it's on him now, he comes back and gets his team back in it. But then Grant Bidell, two huge tackles on D.J. Smith for losses to put Walton behind the chains, force them out of their game. And then the pick six from 20 yards out. And then Bennett with the capper, that 50-yard touchdown catch and run. Partner, I'm going to say all three of them deserve equal credit for keeping Roswell. They needed three guys to stand tall against Walton tonight, and they got just that. History made on the Georgia High School Association play on sports game of the week. The first time we have had three MVPs, player of the game, but I agree 100% without, not, I mean, all 22 players did a phenomenal job, but as far as giving a, a player of the game, with I don't think the any of the one could have done it without the other two, so I agree with you on that one. And a great job by Justin Sanderson coaching his team up, not letting them go in the tank at halftime. Senior night, these guys playing for a lot of pride in front of a pretty packed house here tonight. 
And when all the odds were stacked against him, the Roswell Hornets stood tall. They're not going to the playoffs, but again, Chris, this one almost counts as two for these guys because of what they were able to pull off here tonight against the Walton Raiders. Good luck to Walton in the playoffs. They deserve it. They've had a great season. They, their win streak is snapped at three by a Hornets team that had nothing but pride to play for. An absolutely wonderful effort. Two weeks in a row we've seen teams full of spirit, full of emotion, and I couldn't be prouder of the effort from these young men that we've seen. Loganville last week, Roswell this week, an absolutely epic job of performing and getting it done. Great athletic ability. I mean, everything they showed tonight, the officials notwithstanding, which really kind of threw a wrench into the end of the game and took some of the drama out of it for us. But other than that, a, a tremendous performance by Roswell. They deserve it all. And now it's time for the playoffs. Ten regular season games, a couple of non-region games at the beginning of the season. Then you get into the meat of your region. And when the smoke clears, four teams from each region in the state of Georgia will be playing in the playoffs. Good luck to each and every team. We've seen quite a few teams this, this season that will be making the postseason. This Walton team will be in the postseason. Gainesville will be in the postseason. Buford will be in the postseason. Johns Creek will be in the postseason. West Forsyth will be in the postseason. I think Alpharetta is going to be in the postseason. We've seen. Buford? Yeah, yeah, we've seen an awful lot of talent. And I congratulate each and every team for an excellent season. The ones that didn't make it, you fought hard. You come back next year, you give it another try with the guys that are, that are coming back, the uh, underclassmen. And for the ones that made the postseason starting next week, it's one and done. They face elimination starting next week. The Raiders finish their season 7-3. and three. They'll go on to the playoffs. The Hornets, a big, big third win of the season for them. Congratulations. And they come out with the win here tonight on senior night. So that will do it from the Hornets' nest for Kenny and Jason, my partner Chris King. This is Kevin Beck thanking you so much for joining us here on PlayOnSports.com's Friday night game of the week. The playoffs start next week. We'll be here with you. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you next time.